Hey y'all. Hold on, I'm trying to pass it back sweet. How are y'all doing? You all like the new wig? Sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay, so I'm just gonna link this real quick because I'm gonna talk about what I just linked later. But welcome everyone, welcome. We are going to be discussing today, don't be a pygmesia, that's the name of the video. Stop being a pygmesia. Y'all like the new look? All right, y'all know I always switch it up, so don't get used to one thing, because you know, just when you're getting used to it, I'm gonna switch it up and switch it back and switch it up again. <laughs> so, yes, don't be a pygmesia. By the way, if you are taking my elixirs, I am on phase one, so we are on this journey together. I'm doing this again. It's on my Etsy store. Um, sprinkle, sprinkle. Y'all like the hair? All right. So don't be a pygmesia. And this is for everyone. Men, men can be pygmesians. I wouldn't call them that, but they call them thirsty. Uh oh, Natasha is a member. Sprinkle, sprinkle, welcome. Um, the first step on not being a pygmesia is first of all, you have to stay unbothered. You can't get mad, you can't erupt emotionally when you are dealing with someone, especially in a relationship or trying to be in a relationship. Um, so being a pygmesia is definitely a no-no. And so many people, I mean, I think everyone has been a pygmesia in their life at some point and they know better now. And they, if they don't, they're learning or they should be. Um, the pygmesia era is not beginning, it is ending. And the reason why is because there's so many people that are doing the exact opposite. They're not, they're not being bothered. They're moving on quickly. They don't care. And it's kind of, you know, they're putting their themselves as a priority versus putting another person as a priority who doesn't feel the same way. And I think a lot of women need to do this. If the person that you are with does not feel like you're one of the most important people in their lives, then you shouldn't feel that way about them either. You know what I'm saying? Because if you do, then you're getting the bad end of the bargain and you will probably put more on the line, do more and lose more being that type of woman to, to, uh, to whoever it is that you're with. So you have to knock off that pygmesia, dust off that pygmesia attitude and, and, you know, mindset and start thinking about yourself. Um, first of all, only a man that needs someone to help him or someone to see him as the prize will only choose a pygmesia. That is the only type of man that will choose a pygmesia is one that wants to shine in the eyes of a woman because he can't shine in the eyes of the world. Okay. So he needs someone to validate him and make him feel like the man that he couldn't make himself feel like. Okay. So don't get caught up in being a pygmesia. If you can get him, you can get someone else. If you can get him, you can get another one even better. Okay. Especially if you level up. Okay. Um, how to be the prize. Um, if, if you have to ask that question and try to be the prize, it means you are not the prize. The prize is here. You, you know you're the prize. There's no question. There's no instruction. You just, that's your attitude about everything. Oh, well, you missed it. If you don't see it, that's on you. You know what I'm saying? It does not have to um, be a set of instructions on how to be the prize. If you, you are or you ain't, that's just it. There are no instructions. You are because you think you are or you're not because you're an unsure of yourself. So y'all have to get it together in your own mind first if you're the prize or not. And you are your own prize, okay? You are your own prize first and foremost. You are just allowing other people to um, witness 
a prize, which is yourself. And, you know, a lot of people don't realize that it's up to you to be a prize. It's up to you to not be a pick Misha and to set the standards on how people treat you and how by how you treat yourself. Don't ever fall into being a pick Misha because if you do, you'll probably learn a really good lesson. But at the end of the day, you're going to realize that you could have done better. Okay. Everyone follow everything that she says. I went from being a dust bunny pick Misha to being a glamorous woman, taking luxury trips and getting deposits. These men want to spend, pick the right ones. Exactly. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You say queen of lazy slay. Okay. How you doing? I like that name. <laughs> so, you know, men want a woman that has high standards because that means that they have to work to get her. They have to continuously chase. And that's what men love to do. Um, and it's, it's deep down in their nature. So if you don't give them nothing to chase, if you don't give them nothing to strive for, if you don't have standards that they have to get up in the morning every day and try to reach, then they're not going to get up in the morning for you. They're not going to go hard for you. They're not going to bring you money. They're not going to spend on you. They're not going to do a lot of things for you because you don't require them to. So if you don't require them to do anything, then they're not going to find you interesting for very long. They're going to go find someone else that requires more of them because, you know, mentally men want to improve themselves and get better, not only for us, but for themselves. And we are the, we are what pushes them to that next level. And a lot of men will, you know, will say, well, thank you, um, you know, to their wives, acknowledge their wives, girlfriends, whoever, mother, whatever woman in their life that pushed them to that next level, because it is, you know, something that men need and some of them may not know it because they were never taught or they never had an example of what it is that they needed in life to get that extra, you know, get up and go. And sometimes if it's, if they meet the correct woman who challenges them and makes them strive for more, they will usually be more successful than those who are with Pygmesia. And Pygmesia, you're only handicapping your man and you're only making him need you less and less because you're pumping him up in his mind for the next chick who will demand more of him. So this is why I'm telling y'all, stop being a Pygmesia. Pygmesia is for high school so you can learn not to be a Pygmesia in the real world, okay? <laughs> okay, get your Pygmesia ways out of you in, in high school and maybe early college. After that, you should be well-equipped well, you know, well trained. You should have the mentality of getting the best, knowing what you want, and not settling for less. If you don't, you need to learn. Um, many of you guys are hooked on what a man looks like instead of what his bank account looks like, and y'all need to get up out of that. Okay, that is, you know, being a pick Misha. You will be a pick Misha for somebody's face, but not, uh, you know, I can understand being a pick Misha for a bank account, but not for nobody's face. OK, not for nobody abs. I, if, if you're going to be a pick Misha for anything, be a pick Misha for yourself. And make sure you are only dealing with men that have attractive bank accounts versus attractive faces and abs or whatever else you attract to them for. OK. <laughs> uh, and there are women out there who can't get a man unless they are a pick Misha. So they have resulted in glamorizing being a pick Misha, and that's okay. That's their, that's how the only way they're going to get one. And doesn't mean they're going to keep one. Doesn't mean that that man's going to be with them forever or put a ring on it. It just means they are doing the most right now just to have somebody to hold on to for a little bit. Okay. Um, and that's okay. They're learning as well. And when they figure it out, and their confident level rises enough for them to get out of that, they will. But right now, a lot of people glamorize what the state that they're in so that it's more enjoyable, even though it may not be what is best for them. It's, it's more enjoyable for them to accept their circumstance until, you know, that confidence kicks in or something happens to where they are no longer able to be a pick Misha anymore, then they'll change. But at the same time, if you're glam, if you know, if women are glamorizing be a pick Misha, 
then let them, you know, let them. Someone may comment or someone may, you know, tell them that's nice and everything. And they may not reap the benefits of being a Pikmisha because there are very little benefits of being a Pikmisha. And so when they feel like they're not getting anything in return or anything to show anyways, then they may have to change their own mind. But a lot of times it takes a long time for some women to understand because they were raised by Pygmishas and they were taught to be a Pygmisha. And until they see another way, they don't know any other way. So they might as well enjoy the state that they're in until they learn or do better. Okay. Um, you saw two prominent goddesses on some Pygmisha vibe. They, hey, it works for them, but I will ask. It's okay, like, you know, if you if your target audience is Pygmisha, then you have to relate with your target audience. You know what I'm saying? And Pygmisha can also be an act. There could be five Pygmishas, you know, um, and one of them is acting in order to get to the next level. So, you know, you can't dismiss every picnisha because one might just be pretending to see how far they can get and to get, get into that man's mind or get into their money. And then they switch it up real quick. Okay, so hopefully some of these picnishas are acting. <laughs> but some of them, be, you know, some of them will write and say, well, my birthday and Christmas and Valentine's Day passed and he didn't get me nothing. That's when they start learning around the holiday season what they really have, you know. <laughs> around the holiday season they be they learn quick and they always they always um you know text in here talking about should i leave him he didn't buy me no gift um ma'am you already know when you walked up in there as pick misha that you wouldn't get no gifts <laughs> uh oh sarah sprinkle sprinkle you went to dinner with someone and the desperation and prick misha was uh, on another level try to remember Need to be happy for her like you taught us. Yes, Pick Misha will be elated. She finally got her a man until the holidays roll around. Roll around okay, sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> It'll be a different story after the holidays, I promise you. For Pick Misha, okay. Okay, Jasmine, sprinkle, sprinkle. What do you mean it's okay to be a Pick Misha for a bank account? Treat them differently because they have money. No, when I say be a Pick Misha for a bank account, it means whoever you're targeting, if, if they are, um, you know, if they are a man of means, then you need to get their attention or they need to notice you somehow. OK, but when you get in, then you can, you have your standards. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people are pick niches to get attention because a man is attractive and their bank account be dry as what, you know, desert. But they will do all that hooping and hollering, getting up early in the morning, putting on their makeup and wigs and crap for a broke man. OK, that doesn't motivate me. And <laughs> if you think about the opposite, a man is not going to get up early in the morning, put shave, put his cologne on, you know, get to work on time, do his best for no pick me. He already has that doesn't require anything of him who will probably take care of him if he decided to quit his job. They're not going to go do that. Okay. So definitely what I'm saying is a lot of times women will do the most to get a man's attention, but it's not worth it. So that's what being a pick me for a bank account is. And you're going to get up early and look your best and, and turn man's head. Make sure it's the man with the money, baby. Oh, pretty Yasmin. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I appreciate you. Um, you know, and being a pick Misha will teach you life lessons. It will teach you to prioritize yourself or no one else will. Okay. Y'all will see right after Christmas, New Year's and Valentine's Day. These comments are going to be filled with women asking, should they leave their man because they didn't get a gift or they got something cheap and and then I usually ask, well, what did you get him? And it's some expensive thing. That's why. If you if you stick to what I say, get him something cheap or inexpensive and demand something expensive, 
ahead of time, not at the last minute, because, you know, a lot of times men need to see if you're worth it or not. So you tell them what you want, you know, you know, give them a, a, at least a month. Some of y'all are not dating men that are able to just do it like that. So they may need to save up or whatever. Um, so give them at least a month and tell them this is what you want or you don't want nothing else. <laughs> and see what he do. Okay. And don't go and get him nothing of equal value or more. Get him something that is a little bit less because like you're not supposed to be doing too much. He's the man. Remember, he can't, he's not supposed to compete with your gift. He's supposed to just receive what you feel like he that you want him to have. Think more sentimental versus financial when it comes to gifts for men. Right? Pay attention to what they like. Pay attention to the little things. And maybe you make a little gift basket or get them something more you know, significant and personal, that's not expensive. Okay. So you don't want to do that because it gives pick me vibes. Um, it does give me pick, pick me vibes when a woman spent too much money on a man. All right. Now, if you have kids with this man and it's like a, a group gift from all the kids and whatever, you can say that then great, but that should be the only one and you shouldn't pile it up. You're not saying the clause. Okay. Is agreeing to date too soon on dating app pick me? Um, I don't know about that dating app stuff. I think that's what it's for. You there to date. Um, I think the faster they see you in, in person, the faster you can get to that wallet. <laughs> so I mean, I would I would definitely do more dating than being on a dating app because honestly, it's a waste of time. Okay, you're just scrolling at this point. Are you there to get this money? Go get this money. Go get this, you know, go get the man with the money. And then get off the dating app. You know, once you find one that has money. Uh, all right. Always stay the prize in your own mind. Never be a pick me. You should never doubt yourself. I don't care what happens. As soon as you start doubting yourself, you're going to look bad to that other person anyway. As soon as you start being insecure about who you are, what you, you know, what you are and all that kind of stuff, it's going to come through in your conversation. It's going to come through in how you, you know, you talk to this person, how you respond to this person. So don't even think it, you know, if you feel like you're all that, they're lucky to have you in a relationship, they're lucky to be in your presence, then that will continue those standards will be high and you will never have to worry about being a pigmisha. And just think about this. If you have to work too hard to keep a man or whatever, that's not the man for you. Okay. Cause they're supposed to be working hard to keep you. And if you're not understanding that, then your pigmisha mode has taken over. Okay. You're not supposed to work hard to keep a man. They're supposed to work hard to keep you. That's it. Okay. If you're working hard to keep a man, you're doing it backwards, and you are a pick me show. You do not work hard to keep a man. They work hard to keep you. <laughs> he said, when he gives you his number instead of taking yours, does he want me to chase him? Um, I'm not taking his number. He's going to have to get my number. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you know what? I'll take the number, but I'm going to also write mine. And if you want to call, call, I will have yours, but you go have mine. And guess what? The numbers work the same way. I'm, I'm not making the first call unless you have a business that I need something from. Um, and we're going to do business together and I'm going to be a client of yours. Um, then I better be free if you like me. Okay, sprinkle, sprinkle. But I'm not calling first for any other reason. OK, you you got you got a phone, too, sir. If you don't use it, then you, you know, not my problem. <laughs> Destiny, you should play mind games on him and go ghost. <laughs> you have a man give you his card. I felt like I should have waited a little bit before calling him. Um, It depends on. OK, so here's here's an example. If you're young. You ain't got no job. You ain't got no money. This man got money. You know he gonna pay them bills. Go ahead and give him a call because there's no shame in a young girl making the first call if she ain't got no job, no money, and this dude 
gave her this card. There is no shame in that. But and if you know, y'all go out on a date, and if he ain't if he ain't packing that stuffed envelope full of cash and trying to stick it in your purse by date two or three, tear up the card. Don't call back. Okay. Um, but if you're a little bit older and you have these high standards and you're like, okay, well, um, I'll take your car, but here's my number also. Let them make the first move. Okay. Y'all like my lipstick? This is leveled up by leveled up cosmetics, y'all. Y'all may talk it all, yes. Okay. And I do have a, I actually have a, okay, this is a coupon code. You just type in five for $5 off your whole level up order. Level up cosmetics dot us. Let's see if I'll link it to you guys. Just type in whatever you're looking for. Like if you're looking for lipstick, type in lipstick. Sometimes everything is not, not everything is going to show up on the first page of my website. So just type in whatever you're looking for. If you're looking for stationery, type in stationery, look for lipstick, I'll type in lipstick, all the lipsticks will come up. So just use that search bar, baby. Okay. Uh-oh, Giselle, sprinkle, sprinkle, you broke up because of verbal abuse. Need an exit plan, please. Um, I'd be verbally abusing them back, so it'll be neutral. Um, sorry, but you know, I'm a Pisces. We be we cuss you out worse than your worst nightmare. When we get mad. Um, I'm not moving because of verbal about you. I'm not getting ready to relocate. I'm ready to get you get a gift after cussing you out because you feel so bad for what you said. I'm ready to call my mama on the phone and say, guess what he called me? I'm I'm ready to do the most. Okay. I'm a proactive person. You know, I'd be like this. While he while he's verbally abusing you, get on the phone with your mama on speakerphone. He don't really know until it's too late. Okay, let me tell y'all how to handle this. Be like, when he verbally abusing you, you get on the phone with mama. You heard that, mama? Can you believe this fool? <laughs> I know. Girl, he think I care. You know, you, you know, you know you right. Could be little PP syndrome. <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. Yeah, his confidence level ain't too high. He's a little insecure. He need to get some more money. I would really be on the phone, on speaker, letting everybody hear his verbal abusive comments so that when they see him next time, they look at him crazy. And so he'd be reluctant to ever do it again. And he's going to have to buy an apology gift and be extra good. If my mama come over and say, it, like, make up some lies, talk about he was drunk or he was in a bad mood or something, I don't care. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna get paid off of that, or I'm gonna make him feel even worse. Okay, that's how you make a verbal abuser feel worse because they're, they know what they're saying is absolutely wrong. Or call his mama if you got his mama number. Do the same. It doesn't even matter. Call somebody, mama. <laughs> Okay, don't let people get away with stuff unless you allow them to get away with it temporarily so that you could go back later and throw it in their face. I don't care. But at the same time, don't let people's words bother you. Use their own words against them with your mama or your daddy. If you got a daddy or a brother, whoever, call somebody and let them hear whoever it is going off. Okay, because that's what I would, the first thing I would do, because I'm just petty like that, just just for fun, just for entertainment. Like, it's, it's entertaining enough to have an argument, but to make it even more juicy and spicy, call somebody and put them on the speaker. You, didn't, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I bet you won't do it again. Okay. All right. You said, call your other man. Yeah, you he, hear how this man talking to me? That's why you need to come get me. I'm tired of this one. <laughs> I know, I know, like, getting people riled up, they just laugh. Exactly. 
See, this why I have to have a side dude, okay? <laughs> All right. What if he threatens to kick you out or not give you any money if you verbally abuse him back? First of all, I wouldn't be in a situation where if he kicked me out, that I would not have any place to go or any better place to go. I'm going to have that already arranged. Or I'm going to call his mama and say, well, me, uh, you know, your son is verbally abusing me and trying to kick me out. Um, is this how you raised him? <laughs> First of all, he broke. He ain't got, you know, he's he can't control nothing. So he started acting like a child, throwing fits. So, you know, I'm just wondering, is this how you raised him? <laughs> yeah, I'll embarrass him even further. How do you keep from, how you keep things fun when married to with kids? I already stopped being needy, jealous, and working all over. Girl, find something else to do. Go, go have fun. Go do other stuff. Join some type of thing or, you know, decorate your house. Do some beauty regimens, uh, read books. Um, I'm a nerd, so I'm reading books, doing weird stuff, scrapbooking. Like I, I just do stuff that I like. I make videos. So just do everything that you never had time to do and have fun. But honestly, if somebody's trying to kick you out, if you receive a mail there, they need 30 day notice, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Get the. All you got to do is say, well, I have legally I have 30 day notice if I'm receiving my mail here before you can even dis decide that it's time for me to leave. By then, y'all have made up and he would have bought you a gift. And if you slick, you can get that name on that uh, lease or deed. So he can't do it no more. OK, sprinkle, sprinkle. Just trying to tell you, don't be a pick me sure you think you be smart like threats. Threats are challenges. They're not threats. It's like, oh, you want to kick me out? Well, do you know the law, sir? I get mail here. You ain't, okay, I'm not going anywhere, darling. <laughs> okay. You said get the utilities in your name? Mm -hmm. Get the cheapest utility in your name and get the money to pay for it from him. Keep your name on something, on some mail, some something. And you can't get kicked out. It, then it's a legal situation. Okay. That's all you got to do. If you're there more than two weeks, you're a roommate in North Carolina. Okay. Y'all need to learn the law so y'all can use it. Y'all be sitting up here scared, ignorant, and being a pig Misha for some dude. And every all the laws are on your side. Oh, Ariel, sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you, Shira, from the UK. I, is that UK or Australia? Here, I can't sleep. I'm raising two little girls, and the lesson you've learned from my mother never knew. Glad to be able to rise, raise them. Sorry, got to make the screen a little bit bigger. Glad to be able to raise them with this knowledge and share. Oh, thank you, sprinkle, sprinkle, girl. I appreciate you. Oh, Great Britain. Okay. Yes. <laughs> How to ask for an allowance when you don't work. Um, if you are with a man and you have been taken off the market and that is your significant other, your boyfriend, or he's claiming you, then he needs to claim your bills as well. Otherwise, you cannot say that you are not with him. You are still technically single and single to mingle. So if he's un, if, if you're with a man and he wants you off the market, then he needs to totally take you off the market by taking your bills off the market. Okay. Because if you're dating a man and you don't have a job and you want an allowance and you worried about how you're going to pay this, bill, how are you going to successfully date this man and, and, and enjoy dating him? If you worried about how you're going to pay your bills, he needs to take care of the bills. If he wants to call you his and claim you. Okay. Otherwise, other men will be able to pay them bills and, um, and go out with you as well. So I'm not I'm not feeling if you're dating someone that you shouldn't be getting any money. You just need to tell him, you know, I'm not going to be able to spend as much time with you because I'm going to have to go figure out how I'm going to pay these bills. Um, unless you would like to help support me, that would be awesome. And we can have 
more fun and spend more time together and do more things. Because then I'll be freed up and not have to worry about, you know, these petty bills. Okay. Uh-oh, Chriselle oh, Sprinkle Sprinkle just broke up with your rich ex because of his temper. Living with him said he will help me with my move. How can I milk this? Um... Tell them you need new furniture too, girl. Get some new furniture. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Get that new furniture. That's all I'm saying. Appreciate that. Hey, throw in some new furniture while he while he at it, okay? Tell him it might be cheaper just to buy you some new furniture. What are your thoughts on joint bank accounts? Only if they're not real joint bank accounts, but just pretend play ones. You know, like your real money is somewhere else. You put like $200 in a joint bank account and call it a joint bank account just so you can have access or, you know, emergencies. But I'm not talking about no real joint bank account. That's silly to me. If y'all don't have the same social security number or fingerprint, I ain't, you know, no. <laughs> not even a twin, okay? No, like joint bank accounts are for people that trust other people. I don't trust nobody, so I don't trust nobody. If you trust them enough with your money, you go ahead, girl. I don't. Uh oh, Winter Rose, mine is not adding your name on the deed because of student loans. What to do? Tell them to pay off them student loans. Sprinkle, sprinkle. The heck. Get them student loans paid off. He should, he should be paying them. Are you working in that field? That, put that on your list of bills for him. Okay. And I know a lot of people think this is appalling and like, well, why should he pay the bills? The same reason you, you going to give it up to him. Okay. Why should you open your legs for him if he can't pay no bills? That's just my question. <laughs> you ain't getting nothing if you're not paying no bills, sir. I'm sorry. It's, it's not going to work. I don't feel comfortable enough. Saying I'm in a relationship with you, laying up in the bed, hollering with you, and my bills is due. It's not going to work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you said X has come back because the grass wasn't greener on the other side. Girl, make them pay. Exactly. Sonia, sprinkle, sprinkle. A man at department store gave you his number so you countered and gave mine so that he could pursue me. He hasn't contacted me thoughts. Um, he will. Just, just wait a little longer. Wait a little longer. Okay. Honestly, I'm not calling someone if they have my number. Like, you got my number. You know what to do. You know what to do. If you don't, then you don't. You don't know what to do. Not my problem. Moving on. Yeah. Uh oh, 304, sprinkle, sprinkle. Women should have a secret stash. Exactly. A man is still supposed to help you financially if you went long distance. Um, well, I'm not claiming any man that's long distance. I'm not saying that's my boyfriend or nothing. Like you just long distance and you just long distance. You're not my man. I'm you can still be dating other people and getting your bills paid by other people. But if that if that long distance man wants you to be totally exclusive to to him, yes, he needs to be paying the bills, or he needs to be sending you some type of money or something. You said, "Where do you hide money when you don't work?" I don't understand what when you don't work has anything to do with the place you hide money. Like if you don't work. Oh, you trying to, oh, like, you know, you can have a savings account. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Divine God is sprinkle, sprinkle. A share of my partner changed the password on their phone after I confronted about sneaky behavior. Any advice? Thank you, sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, okay, divine God is sprinkle, sprinkle. Uh, sneaky behavior, that's, that's, that's going to be, that's a given. Okay. They're going to change the stuff on their phone. Sneaky behavior, of course. Why would you think anything else? <laughs> um, you have to go be into a relationship where you already know this is going to happen. So you get your money. Like, okay, that's okay. You know, I think, you know, your little sneaky behavior 
you know, that's fine or whatever, but I'm hungry. Where are you taking me out to eat? Or I need new tires. Where are you going to do this? You know, I, I need, I need this. What are we going to do? Like lead with the sneaky behavior and then ask for something. Okay. Cause he going, he going to do it anyway. If he want to, there's nothing that's going to stop him if he really wants to, but get something out of it, make it cost, mention it and then mention what you want. Okay. Put spending money on me and associate it with him being sneaky. So every time he's sus of being sneaky, you know, he know he got to spend some money. Okay. Associate it with, with spending. Okay. Oh, Serena, sprinkle, sprinkle. If he's cheating, if he won't take me on dates anymore. Um, I don't know, but you can take yourself out by yourself and still get your meals paid for and get your drinks paid for. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay. And I don't care if he's cheating because the, the point is, if he's cheating, are you going to leave? Is he paying them bills? You can be cheating too. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Oh, did he's alchemy? Why? See, these guys aren't sitting here worried about if you cheating or if you're not going out with them anymore. And if you're not doing this with them anymore and if you're being sneaky, they don't care. Because why? Because they're a priority to themselves. They already know that you're doing right by them. They already know that, that you're being a pick Misha for them. They already know they don't have to worry about you because you call and text and tell them that where you are 24 seven. They already know. They have no worry about you. They should be worried about you. You should be going places. Your, they shouldn't have access to your phone and you should be out and going out by yourself, getting dressed up and going wherever you want to go and not telling them where you at unless you feel like it. Okay. Y'all are doing it backwards. <laughs> okay. He said, this only applies if you're not dating a dusty. If a rich man doesn't give, what does that mean? It means he's not rich. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Dee Dee's alchemy. I appreciate you. Member in the house. It means he's not rich because rich men who don't give are worried that their money is going to run out. So, I'm not like, and they're not confident enough that their money is going to continue to roll in and they're not going to enjoy life and they're not going to, you know, spend money and do these things with, you know, they know women like in order to please them. Then, you know, I'm sus of their richness. You said, but he's definitely rich. Well, see, people's definition of rich it's totally different. You can be rich because you don't spend money or you can be rich because you have continuous money coming in, which kind of rich is he? You know what I'm saying? If he just, if he doesn't want to spend money on you, there's another rich man who will just saying, just like there's a broke dusty, he'll spend his mama's last $20 on you. And another broke dusty won't, you know, men will spend on what they like. So make sure you're worthy of spending on. If he doesn't spend on you, then he don't spend on you. Somebody else will. Okay. I don't care if he's the son of a billionaire. He ain't spending, then I don't care. That's that's how you have to think about it. Status means nothing if my bills ain't paid. Okay. You can be sitting there with somebody with high status and broke as whatever. They ain't got nothing in your bank account. Bills past due. How does that make you feel inside? Okay. I don't care who you are. You will become somebody in my mind when you can pay these bills, when you can give me some money, then you become someone to me. Okay. Otherwise you just not beneficial in my life. Okay. Being with someone should be beneficial to you. That's it. If they're not beneficial to you, then who cares how much money they got? Like, honestly, that money has to be beneficial as well. You can't have somebody next to you that's rich. Okay, okay. That might be a, an attraction, but if they're not spending, then it's not an attraction anymore, you know? Okay. It's not an attraction. It, then it becomes something that you have to roll your eyes at because it's petty. <laughs> Your husband has a son lives in New York with your mom and he visits. Huh? I don't understand that. You said this disturbs your home. 
and husband doesn't act, the boy is his weakness. How do I stop being a mom? Okay, how does he disturb your home? <laughs> I'm not, you gotta give me, you, you gotta you gotta go more into it because I'm not understanding how he disturbed your home. Then whenever he visits, make sure your spa days are set. Make sure you go get your nails and hair done while he's over there. Make sure you out shopping. Make sure you're scarce. Make sure you're going out to eat with your friends or by yourself or whoever when he's up when he's over there. Make sure you're scarce. Like if you don't like him, then be gone. When he when he about to leave, come back. You said disrespect the house. Dirt is your house. Oh, okay. Um then leave it dirty, baby. Don't clean up after him. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Now his daddy get on him. That's what's going to, you know, that's going to be the issue. Don't clean up after him. Leave everything as is. Let him stay dirty. Do whatever you got to do. Go check it to a hotel, motel. Not, don't go to no motel. Go to the hotel and tell him that you can't stay in this filthy house and you ain't nobody's maid. And you need to tell your son how to clean up or you need to hire a maid when he comes. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You need to put your foot down. And say, you know what? Your son is dirty and he don't clean up after himself. I'm not cleaning it. You need to hire a maid when he come over here. Because I ain't, I ain't the one. Or you need to send me somewhere on vacation. All right? You just tell him. Just straight up like that. And don't regret it. And look, right, look him right in the eye. If it bothers you that much. But I just let it be dirty. I don't care. I'm like, I'm going out to eat. Y'all have fun cleaning them dishes. Y'all have fun with that laundry. <laughs> okay. When he leave, they leave it just like that until the daddy clean it up. I'm telling y'all, sometimes y'all got to go on strike and not care and stay unbothered until they fix the problem. Because if they think you're going to rush behind him and clean up all the time, they ain't going to do it. You the maid. Stop being the maid, and the problem will solve itself. You say you have a baby girl, so freedom is limited. They, last time I checked, babies can go anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Last time I checked, y'all go to a hotel. Last time I checked, y'all can go visit family. Last time I checked, you know, y'all can go places. And he asks why you're leaving, tell him. I don't like being in a house with somebody who doesn't pick up after themselves. So your son, you need to teach him. I'm not finna clean. I'm not finna have my daughter in this environment. Y'all go ahead. I'll be back when he gone. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to deal with it. He going to deal with it or I'm going to be... Spending money at the hotel on room service with his child uh, on his bill. Okay, so he need to pick a struggle. He said, "says the son is too rambunctious with the baby go out." Mm -hmm. Like honestly, I'm just gonna say that because I don't care. What he gonna do? You got a child. If he if he messes with messes up with you, he got two child supports. Okay, you ain't finna do that. <laughs> mm -mm. so you know don't be a pick me should stay on your ground tell him how it is and if he don't do what you need him to do then go spend his money at a nice hotel or on a vacation okay how do you get handsome men to spend money on you Be 10 times better looking than him. <laughs> okay. You have a potential who wants you to act like his girlfriend, even though I said I'm not interested in a relationship. How do I fake it to get that sprinkle sprinkle? Um, tell him even pretend girlfriends cost, baby. Like he, if I'm going to pretend to be your girlfriend and... Um, 
you know, I'm going to need some accessories to pretend and, you know, really get the act on. Like, I'm going to have to know what it feels like to really be your girlfriend. So you need to pay these bills. You need to buy me some gifts so I, I can get in the feeling so I can act the part correctly. <laughs> I need to know how I feel. Spoil me and I'll, and I'll let you know. Leave handsome men alone. Exactly. They need. If they're not coming up to you trying to spend already naturally. Then leave them alone, baby. He you said your sugar daddy wants you to go on holiday with him on Friday, but no, I'm not comfortable enough as I would like to be with him. Then get separate rooms, darling. Like get you can get a connecting room at the uh, the hotel or wherever y'all are going, and just say, "Well, I like to have my privacy so I can get dressed, and and then maybe if things go well, you know, we'll see what happens." But leave, like try to get a connecting room and tell him to make sure to you know book a connecting room, or else you ain't gone. <laughs> mm hmm. You say you're exhausted, too many vacations, you're tired of packing, unpa unpacking your bag, you need an assistant for this task. <laughs> oh, well, maybe you could just take like one carry on bag with all your essentials and go shopping <laughs> when you're there, make him pay. If you're going on vacation with somebody, oh, I need new stuff. You said, why don't pick Misha realize it's a scam because she's blinded. By the love, by the fake love, by the hope of love, by the fake concept of he's going to pick me because I make everything super easy for him. Men never pick nothing that makes super easy. That's super easy for them. They want a challenge. That's why as soon as they get a pick me, sure, they go out looking for something else because they want to chase. If they stay chasing you, they stay having to please you and make sure everything is correct. They don't have time or energy or the need to chase anybody else. So you got to make sure you don't make life easy for them, period. Okay. I know, I know a lot of these pick me out here talk about be his piece for what? So he can go look for some excitement. <laughs> okay. Be his piece. Okay, good. You be his piece. So he's he going to go find somebody to rev it up. And when he do, don't be mad because you was his piece. Now he got another piece. Not the kind you talking about. Okay. <laughs> you be a side piece, world piece. Okay. What if Sugar Daddy says you can use the bathroom? I don't disturb you talking to, taking two rooms, then if he can't afford you, he can't afford you, you need your own room. Okay, then say, well, then this is not a good idea and I'm not going to go. Cut him off right there when he say he can't afford it because that means he just said that he broke in your mind. <laughs> say, even when me and my girlfriends travel, we get separate rooms with connecting doors. Even when, you know, even when me and my mom travel, Make it up live, even if it ain't true. We get just say this is your norm. This is what you do. You do not share rooms with people. Okay. It is uncomfortable. What if you have to go to the bathroom and make some loud noises up in there? You know, he gonna hear it. So tell him that you are very you're very conscious about sharing a room with somebody. You've always had your own private room. It was just something that you did. Tell him this is your norm and you are so sorry. Um, you, you have no problem opening the doors. You have no problem doing this as a snap, but you really need your own private room. If not, I, can, I, I ain't going to be able to do it. I'm going to find somebody else that has less standards. Bye. So, you know, you can't allow people to, to try to, you know, tell you what, he, what they can and can't do. They, they, they would do it if they wanted to. Okay. If they want you bad enough, they're going to do it. And then they'll be like, dang, 
She pushing me to the limit. I like it. She making me do stuff I ain't never done before. Okay. Um. And they like it. Literally, they really like it. They like it. Then when they talk to their friends, yeah, I'm with this girl. She she, she look good. Yeah. She, she made me get a joining room. Yeah. She got her own. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, I could do, I could snore, walk around. My boxers are naked. She got her own room. And, you know, things go well tonight. I'm gonna open that door. How you go? Yeah, I had to pay for two rooms, but I got it like that. I got it like that. Yeah, I could do that. She's worth it. Yeah, she might be the one. <laughs> Versus this conversation. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking this chick to the uh on vacation. Mm -hmm. You know, she's staying in the same room. We got a queen bed, one queen bed. Mm -hmm. I got that. I got that discount. The friends and family hotel. Yeah. Mm hmm. We flying out on my frequent flyer miles, so it's basically free. <laughs> and she probably gonna give it up too because I took her shopping at Forever Twenty One. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll let you know how I go. All right. I'm going to post it on Instagram. Take, take your phone off. Bye. <laughs> you got that frequent flyer, Miles. Um. Should I tell Sugar Daddy at the last moment, just before taking the flight, if he has taken two rooms or not, or so that he doesn't cancel the trip? No, tell him now that you're not going unless there are two rooms and you need the itinerary. And then you need to call up there and double check. Not in front of him. Like, don't call up there in front of him and double check. But ask him for the itinerary. Because, like, if it's for, say it's for safety reasons. I want, I want to get this information to my sister for safety reasons or my cousin or whoever. Because you don't just go out of town with some dude and not tell people where you're going to be. Okay? So you can lie. So it's for safety reasons. I'm going to give this to my sister so just in case anything happens. Um, then you can get the itinerary, call up to the hotel. You're like, is this the joining room? No, ma'am. It's only one room for now. Then you can be like, well, I called up to confirm and, you know, just to make sure everything was all right. And they said it was only one room. So I went ahead. And changed it to two rooms. <laughs> because I think you might have just forgotten. Okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You say got to get your money worth from gold diggers. You put my root on them before you can, before they can even get a dime. <laughs> oh. You be putting roots on women because you ain't got it like that. That's okay. Sprint, sprint. We all got our own ways of doing stuff. <laughs> all right. <laughs> At least you have a method, okay? The money can't get them. Maybe something else will. I'm so broke, I got to put a root on them. <laughs> that's, what, that's what these men be doing. Looking up how to put a root on somebody so I don't have to spend my mama's twenty dollars. She know I gotta fill up that tank before I bring the car back. They be learning spells and magic so they can get some <laughs> get some without spending none or getting a job. <laughs> they read giant books and try to go get initiated and sacrificing chickens and stuff over here instead of going to get a job. That's okay. You know. <laughs> That's fine, you know. If you're going to put in that much effort, you could have got paid for that. Okay? Maybe you can do some roots for other people at the same time. Get your money, sir. I ain't mad at you. If you're going to do a root for you, do a root for other dust dusties too. And but get their money and get their mama twenty dollars. You save your mama twenty dollars before you add all of it up. You gonna have everybody's mama's twenty dollars, and you won't have to do roots no more. Okay. 
You just have money. Okay. Just keep doing it. Keep going and keep going. Make your mama proud so you can give her give her a twenty back twenty dollars back flipped. Here go here you go, mama. This eighty. I know you gave me twenty. I'm gonna give you back eighty. I need five. I got I got me a new business now. Doing roots. <laughs> you know he writing that down. He thinking about it. All right. <laughs> I'm not I'm not joking. Do it. Okay. At least you'll have some money in your pocket. Okay. Um <laughs> they need prosperity spell. Okay. Throw that in there too. If he's saying what what is significant other an adult son is passing. Passive, aggressive, and petty. Um, then you need to mirror that the same way. You need to be passive, aggressive, and petty as well. I mean, that's the only thing they understand, obviously. Shoot. You, if they do it, you can do it. Why should you put up with it when you can do the same thing? That's all I'm saying. What is... Yeah, like, that's not even a question. Whatever they're doing, you do it better. Okay? Whatever they do, you do it 10 times better. Be more pity. Okay? Be more passive-aggressive. Every time they walk in the door, take a deep breath, roll your eyes. <sighs> that's all you got to do. Then they'll be trying to worry about what's wrong with you and they'll be trying to put you in a better mood because you walk in and all of a sudden they walk in and all of a sudden you get in a bad mood. They're going to try to hurry up and fix it. Okay. Now the attention is on you. Y'all need to learn how to play. Y'all need to learn how to read people and, and counteract that. Because I, I wouldn't put up with it. I'd just do the most. <laughs> Um, you said the single women congregation. Where your mama at then, Sakari? She ain't in here. We can't start the meeting without her. You tell her I'm live. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> no, you can't be the treasurer. You know what happened last time? You got that twenty dollars. You went. To the store and come back with your mama change. Nope. All right. All right. We're gonna wait on his mama before we start the single single women's congregation. Oh, by the way, y'all, I've been married for like many, many years. So, you know, I don't know if I'm still able to lead the single woman congregation. But I'm, I, you know. <laughs> All right. You've never heard anyone explain those things in such a simple and easy to understand way. Thank you. Oh, okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You were welcome. Mm hmm. You said worry about the gym, not my mom. Why would I worry about the gym? I'm already married, baby. Spark, spark. Your mom made me, baby. You can get your mama a gym membership so she can finally get you a stepdaddy. I don't know. I'm good, baby. Okay. I'm the leader in this meeting. <laughs> okay, wise women work. With the, okay, you laughing? <laughs> yeah, these these dust is coming here, knowing they're supposed to be clocked in in the drive through and over here on their phone. When they see somebody laugh, who don't look like a pig <laughs> Okay. Men are running game 24-7. Why is that? Exactly. Why men all of a sudden so mad that women can do better and, and run the same type of game that they run. Okay. We don't care no more. If we don't get what we want, then we ain't wasting no time with you. Okay. You ain't got to um, tell somebody 
this, this, and that to try to bring down their self-confidence or whatever. It doesn't matter. We know you broke. You should be trying to lift your own confidence level up or get your money up. You know, down and other people ain't going to get your money up, sir. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Maybe you need to focus on that. Instead of worry about other people focusing on the gym, focus on your bank account. All right. I'd rather have a bank account than a gym account any day. Why would I worry about the gym? I'm already married. Exactly. I'm gone. Shoot. I'm married. Shoot. <laughs> y'all, if y'all want me to go to the gym, shoot, I might. Y'all know what results when women start going to the gym and working out. All right. That's when your husband start bringing home cakes and cookies and asking you if you want something to eat. <laughs> All right. And y'all, I don't mind my weight. I don't mind my current weight. I've been bigger. I've been smaller. I'm still going to look good. I still ain't got to work. I still get all my bills paid. I am good, baby. Y'all don't have to worry about me. Worry about your mama if she's still clocking in at Walmart, greeting them people. Get her off of the payroll. Retire your mother. And don't, don't be over here worried about me, sir. I'm good. <laughs> oh, Dee's alchemy. How do you respond to Pikmisha's efforts to make you feel bad for living such a great life while she isn't? Give her my book. <laughs> Suggest a reading list and make sure all my titles are on it. Speaking of books, y'all, I'm going to do my um, official book release party, but this is the copy that I ordered to, to proof it. Make sure it's all good. So it's not for sale, but if, when you order yours, it's not going to have this on there. And it is a 200 plus page book on how to level up to your best life. And um, all my books are listed on the back, or most of them, for the Level Up channel. So y'all can gift them this book along with my other books. I Bring Nothing to the Table, The Wisdom of She-Ra Seven, and... Um, too Pretty to Pay Bills, I believe that's on an ebook that you guys can get. Um, but my best selling one is I Bring Nothing to the Table and The Wisdom of She or Seven. And hopefully you guys will also make this a bestseller. This also comes in a heart, a heart cover if you want to upgrade, but it also comes in a paperback. And once again, this will not be on there. Um, you can purchase the book from Amazon. And here is the link. No, that's the level up. The link is actually at the very top of the comment, but I will link it again in here just in case. Hold on. And this is the this is the best book that I think I've written because it, it's not about just physically leveling up, but it's mentally mentally leveling up and enjoying your life on any budget and just really feeling leveled up at any stage um, and not having to say, I'm going to wait and start this level up when this, this, and that, but already starting it where you are and feeling um, a life of comfort and luxury exactly where you are. Um, so this is really good. You can get this for your mom. If there's any dusties in the house, maybe this is a good book for your mother. Um or your sister, or your cousin, or your baby mama, y'all need to go ahead and get them this. Because once they read this book, they're going to level up their lives and how they feel about their own lives, which will definitely level up the kids' lives, who they're raising. You know, everyone around them is going to benefit from the woman actually being happy and living her best life. So y'all need to get this book quick and it, it's 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 a big size it's full color it's um 200 and something pages and if y'all love me that much i wrote y'all a little letter in the back 
And there's a giant picture of me. Y'all just can't get enough of me in the back as well as on the back. And there is a lot of good stuff in here, y'all. It's just you're going to live your best life with no regrets. There's even a chapter on unbothered, how to stay unbothered. So y'all got to get that. Mm hmm. You said what happens when you have leveled up and hit a plateau toe like the life is better than it was before, but you're trying to figure out what to aim for next. No, this is what this book is for. There is no plateau. It, the plateau is stop and enjoy what you've created. Stop and enjoy everything that you've worked for, looking good and gaining whatever it is that you've gained your money and how to enjoy your money, how to enjoy all the crap you bought, how to enjoy every moment of every day, how to be excited to wake up. The plateau is for you to slow down and enjoy the actual life that you've built and created and achieved and, you know, enjoy that man's money, be how, how to enjoy the freedom of having your bills paid and whatnot, how to look your best and feel your best with what you have. So this book is for anyone who feels like, okay, what do I do next after I've leveled up? Or this book is also for people that feel like, well, what, what do I do while I'm leveling up so I can feel level up so I can keep going? It's the same thing, right? The plateau does not exist. If that's in your mind, because you always feel like there's somewhere to go. Enjoy what you have. Enjoy all the stuff that you've gotten. You know, um, I learned to do this by, you know, eat off your good plates. You know, wear your nice clothes. Don't save them. Dress how you want. Don't care what other people think. You already got your money. You don't have to fit in and be on trend anymore. You can actually be more of an authentic person artistic or whatever type of person that you want to show through more. You know what I'm saying? Um, you already got your bag. Do what you want. Enjoy life. Okay. So that's what that book is really about. And leveling up and, and hitting a plateau means stop, smell the roses, enjoy, drink out of that nice glass, Sip your wine, taste your food, do all of these things that get you excited to wake up in the morning and literally enjoy the life that you have worked and leveled up to and revel in it. Okay. So y'all need to get that book and stop worrying about what the next level is. If you're not where you want to be, look around and make sure that, you know, you have like the best thing to do when you are feeling like there's a plateau plateau, make a list of everything that you are grateful for and that you have and ask yourself what, what else on this list, you know, what else do I need to strive for? I got everything I want. Let me, let me learn how to enjoy it to the fullest and feel like I, are, I have everything. That's what that book is for. Okay. Okay, how do you handle catty comments from women who are jealous of you? Honestly, I feel like I'm here to help all women. And I, I say, if you're jealous of someone, it's because there is something lacking in yourself that you need to come to grips with. Or there's something about yourself that you don't feel confident in, you know, with, then you need to make sure that you build your confidence in that area. So it's not, I don't think it's the person that they're jealous. I just think there's something within them that lashes out in order to make themselves feel good about where they are currently in their life. So I don't care about what jealous people do. I know they're hurting. You know, I know in order to put in the effort and energy to, to give catty comments, it's coming from a place of pain. So I feel like if you're, if you're that hurt, or if you need to lash out at someone, at least you're here learning at the same time. Or if it's with you, at least, you know, they're, you're their example of what they want to be. You know, and, and a lot of times women will be jealous, but maybe they'll level up so they don't have to be that way anymore. Okay. So like, that's, that's the best thing I could say. If you're, if you're sad about your life and you're so focused on someone else, you need to get this book. Most of all, whoever, 
or you need to gift it to someone who is always worried about other people and not putting themselves as a priority. Um, definitely this book will help them. I think a lot of people get upset with people who are catty and evil and mad and jealous, but really it's a cry for help. Really what they need is to learn how to focus on their own lives, enjoy themselves and be exactly the person that they want to be instead of mad at you because you are who and what you always want it to be. Okay. So give them that book. Okay. Give them that book. Send it anonymously, anonymously or whatever. I don't even matter. Okay. <laughs> you said your mother keeps planting doubts and fears into you saying that your husband will leave you in the end. How would you respond? Well, that's why I'm a married rich. So when he leave, I'm leaving with hats. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Bam. So I hope he leaves so I can get this money. That's all you got to say. I'm counting on it. Shoot. What you think I'm getting married for? <laughs> Sometimes sarcasm and comedy will shut people up, especially if it's truth in it. <laughs> okay. For those of us starting out behind in life, kids, single mom, but not the best shape, no family support, unstable financially, no sister circle, which book would I say is the best to start with? Thank you. Um, Honestly, the best book to start with is this book because it teaches you how to enjoy the life that you already have and to enjoy being also unbothered by all of that. Um, it also allows you to, you know, to see how you treat yourself is a reflection of how others will treat you in the future or in the present. So, Definitely this book. Um, and if you're not in the best shape, or if you say you're not in the best shape, this book will also help you understand that it's not about being in the best shape. It's about choosing exactly what it is that you, how you want to feel. Like, uh, what are you getting in shape for? And is that what you really want? Or, you know, how do you feel about it? it? It gets you into how you feel about certain things. And also it gives you some, there are some tips in there on how to make sure that you also still enjoy life if you're trying to count calories as well. So you got a lot of, you got a lot of inspo in here and, you know, kids definitely are expensive, but this book will help you guys also learn how to feel luxurious and comfort in the lifestyle that you currently have. So you definitely should get that book first. And then after you read that book, then you need to get, I bring nothing to the table, baby. Because I bring nothing to the table gives you high standards and it makes you see how valuable you really are and that you will not put up with men just because of what society says, you know, you should do. Mm -mm. You the prize or you're not going to be bothered at all. That's it. If you're not coming into my life to add to me, then exit the building, sir. That is exactly how that book makes you think. Because like if you, like you say, you don't have any of those things. So you don't have time to be falling for the okie doke either. And that book will help you weed out the dusties and the time wasters. <laughs> Mm -hmm. the big font um no actually there's different size fonts like but a, a lot of it is big so you could read it but then there's like little excerpts and stuff like that so yeah you 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 might not need your reading glasses until you get to the little pages where it has a little tape ends and stuff like that um but you know there's different font sizes on each page. So it is a really good quality book. And if you get the hard copy, uh, it's a really pretty, it doesn't have this line across it. So it's like a really pretty pink book. You can display it on your coffee table or on your bookshelf or it's a really good gift. So definitely get your copy soon. I'm gonna do an official book release party live on this channel. I uh, have some rosé, 
I'm gonna give you some champagne, some rosé, and you know we're gonna we're gonna uh, do a giveaway. I, I probably gonna be next week when I get my hard copies in. I'm gonna give away a hard copy, and we're gonna have fun. So y'all keep watching, and I'll definitely um, title it, you know, book release party and giveaway. So maybe one of y'all win one of my hard copies. Okay. Um. Should I intentionally look for a man now or should I focus on myself first? Um, I don't think you need to be looking. I think you be, need to be looking good and attracting. Okay. That's a, that's a, that's a whole nother thing. If you're attracting, you don't got to look, baby. They come find you. Okay. But go out, have fun, be seen. And when they approach, that's how you get them. You don't go looking. You let them find you. Okay, you get that book, baby. And here's the link to it again. Okay, sparkle, sparkle. Eight. You said your provider boyfriend is a nerd. He hacks your phone daily. He do reads all your messages. Damn, men are stressful. Girl, and put something in there that's gonna scare them. Sparkle, sparkle. <laughs> Give him a surprise. <laughs> They're like, I think my man is gay. <laughs> Girl, give him something to read. Um, you're gonna be act acting all masculine when you get home, talking in a deeper voice, trying to come on to you. Girl, play if he gonna, if he doing that, make sure you doing the most too, baby. Okay. Okay. Give him something to read. How to go about dating when boyfriend threatens to pay people to follow me and pay my friends off for information about you? Um, you need to go to church. You need to tell your man, your other man, and you need to date the pastor. I am going to church every Wednesday for Bible study. You know the pastors got money. They got them building funds and the deacons too, okay? You can go to church. What they going to do, follow you at church? <laughs> She's just going to church. All right. <laughs> you about to be the first lady, you this first side piece, whatever. Okay. The the book is leveling up to your best life, creating a life of comfort and luxury. Bashi with it. Yeah. All right. You say you're trying to hang out at the retirement center. Go, go volunteer places wherever you're trying to, you know, hang out and meet people. Volunteer, and he start paying people to follow you to church and to the retirement home. And she's just a good citizen. <laughs> oh, can I read something from my book? I'm so glad you asked. I was going to save that for the launch party, but okay. I will read one thing from the book. Time. This tells you about time. Hold on. Let me get to the correct page. Time. It's about your time. A lot of people waste their time, so I'm telling y'all something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting to the good part. Hold on. Here, I'll just read the summary. Time can also be spent by doing nothing if that is what you choose to do. Remember, it is your time, so you may do with it what you please. Never allow someone to tell you how to spend your time. You're an adult, and you are able to make your own decisions. 
If you feel like lounging all day at home, that is your choice. You can lounge all day long and feel as if you've accomplished a lot. Reading a book, listening to music, watching a movie, taking a long bubble bath, or just laying down and thinking, these are always you choose to relax and put yourself as a priority in ways that allow you to feel comfort and luxury. Earlier in the book, I mentioned how to avoid feeling obligated to do something socially when in lounge mode at home by not answering the phone. If you plan on doing nothing all day, don't accept any phone calls that day unless you want to. Allow yourself that time since time is also a luxury. When you live a life of luxury, your time is also part of that luxury. So use it wisely on those who you prioritize. A lot of people have issues saying no. I have a whole chapter or part about that in the book, how to not feel obligated to do stuff, how to not care, how to stay unbothered, how to use your time the way you choose to do it. You know, a lot of people need um, permission. And I, that book gives you so much permission that you will wake up unbothered and, and not look back. Okay. Lux time is a luxury. And a lot of people want your time and don't want to make you a priority. So if they ain't a priority, they don't get no time, baby. If you're not a priority to them, they barely get anything. All they get is the voicemail or the unanswered text, okay? That's just a little piece of it. Like the rest, there is so much better. Like there's part on self-care. There's part on like how to go out and, you know, um, self-prioritize in like every aspect of your life, uh, how to bond with people, um, and I'll just go through the table of contents. This way. And I also thank y'all in my book, all my YouTube subscribers. So thank you. Y'all have a, a little part in the acknowledgement where I thank you guys. Um, so yeah, you're definitely going to, you're, this is like a cozy, feel-good book, especially, you know, for autumn. You just want to curl up with a blanket and, you know, put some nice music on and put the fireplace on or whatever. This is a really good book to read this season. Um, how to balance your priorities, how to treat yourself, how to prepare in advance for certain things, how to really live your life and appreciate it. There's a chapter on food crafting, how to spend your time. It's just really good uh, how to how to decide to live on purpose. So I would definitely recommend this for some cozy reading as well as that book will change your life. It's basically all my thoughts and advice that I would give someone who wanted to drastically change how they feel about their lives in order to make changes in their lives. Okay, the name of the book. Y'all can get it on Amazon. Here's the, the link, baby. Here's the name of the book, Leveling Up to Your Best Life by She Was Seven. And there's a lot of content in here. So, and there is a nice picture of me in the back for those who love looking at my beautiful pictures. <laughs> Y'all get a full page pic, baby. Bam! I know y'all gonna buy it just for this. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> All right. <laughs> can you make your books on audiobooks, please? I can listen, girl. Can you imagine my voice on audiobook? Just <laughs> chapter two, unbothered. <laughs> I might make one of my book audio, books audiobook. I might have to, maybe I'll do two pretty to pay bills on audiobook one day. Advice for 20 year old woman that has failed university girl. <laughs> now, most people don't end up doing what they did, and went to college for anyway. So, you know what I'm saying? You haven't failed at life. That's all I can tell you. You just failed at memorizing some crap you probably will never use. Okay. 
Tiffany So Talent and Jay Boosie. Hey, members. Shout out to the members. Sprinkle. Like, honestly. He said, is your mother proud of you? Think about all the people who went to school and ended up not doing what they went to school for. How much money they've wasted, Chad. With all that tuition money, you could have started a very successful business with a marketing uh, budget and had employees. Sprinkle, sprinkle. That's all I can say. Y'all going to spend 50000 a year, 20000 a year on an education. Y'all could have had three, four businesses by now. Thriving, paying people to advertise for you. If, you know, or growing it. Four years of growing a business, you could you be getting paid at the same time. So honestly, you get a college degree online these days for uh, what two hundred dollars. What I'm saying is, whatever your passion is in life, or whatever you want to do in your life, go do it. Okay, memorizing a bunch of stuff, you know, for a diploma is not the real world. If you fail, you fail. Don't fail at life. Okay, I would have been like, Mama, I'm, you know, the internet's out. I'm smart. You know, I have, I have good ideas. Give me that college money, and I'm start my own business. Because <laughs> most people they go to college, especially if they go, you know, on a loan or something like that. Then they got all them student loans. Don't have no job or getting paid the bare minimum. You know, unless you're going to be a surgeon or some type of, you know, high power high paid attorney or something like that. I'm not wasting my money on school. I'm going to start my own business because that's what most people are doing these days anyway. Okay. I'm not, I'm not doing it. You say your sugar daddy's paying for your career, your art career while you phase out what I went to school for. Exactly. See, most people don't even want to go into the career that they went to school for. They just went to school to please their parents and look like they was doing something productive. <laughs> Don't waste your money. Just invest it into your own business and really be productive. And then when you grow that business, you can sell it or you can keep growing it and start new businesses and then teach college students how to start their own business after they got a guy out of school, write books, whatever. <laughs> All right, Jay Boopsy Sprinkle Sprinkle. What business you done sold? None. I'm keeping all mine. I'm actually going to pass them down to my children uh, so they can have their own business in high school so they don't have to work for nobody. Sprinkle Sprinkle. What business has your mama got? Did your mom pass you down a business? All right then. All right, so that's what I'm doing. Like, I, I got businesses that I will pass down. And it will be up to the child to keep those businesses going. Of course, I'm going to help them and guide them along the way. But I have them. They don't want to work for nobody. They work for themselves. And, you know, it's a good thing. You don't want to, like, most people will buy their kids stupid stuff. Give them a business and see what happens. Um, what your dad passed on to you, my, my good thinking, my brains, my good looks. My mom and my dad contributed to that, but, you know. Probably, uh, I think also the unbotheredness and also... Um, I think I get a lot of the traits of um, knowing more than the average person. He was very smart. So, see the whole tip? Here, y'all know the dusty whole tip. Got to come in here and change their name so they can feel relevant. <laughs> then be the ones with that clock in, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Calling up the Asimo Owls. All right. Y'all, I don't care today. I'm just, I'm, I go for it.
you shouldn't look down on hourly workers. I don't. I actually feel sorry for them. That's why I'm writing books to help them learn how to own their own business because they're going to be replaced by some robots and computers so long. Okay. <laughs> so y'all should be thanking me. You act like I'm better than other people and you not. No, you said it. I didn't. If you recognize that's fine with me. I might act that way, but if that's, that's what you're feeling, then I can't help. You. I mean, I, I might be better than some. And don't forget, I have clocked in before. I have worked for other people and I said no more. I ain't going to do it. So therefore, if I was in that same situation and I said I ain't doing it no more and I got out, I might have some information to share with people that also want to get out and, and do better. Okay. I might want to prevent my children from going through sexual harassment at 15 by some old dude at the uh, at the restaurant and actually and give them a business to run themselves and, and come start off as a girl boss. OK, I might I might want to do that. But, you know, a lot of people will say, well, don't look down on this. I don't look down on it. I've been there, done it. Don't want to don't want to do it no more. Want to help people get up out of there and. If people are striving to do better in life, they should be striving to do better in life also to give their kids more. So I'm sorry I don't want to be in the cycle of poverty. I'm sorry I don't want to continue that. I'm sorry I don't want to uplift that. Excuse me. Maybe you should start a channel on poverty cycle and how to keep it going. Okay? And make sure you keep that hotel name because it goes with, with the territory. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Yeah, don't be no pick beacher. I know you somebody's pick beacher because I think you said you was a girl one time. If you a girl, something wrong. <clears throat> something wrong. Somebody done brainwashed you to the 10,000th degree. You need to go get that fixed. And I know that's why you keep coming back to the channel because you need you need to hear some, some realness. So that's why I don't kick you out because I know you in pain. I know you broke. I know you wish you... You know, and first you need first you need to start out by changing that screen name because that ain't bringing nothing but brokenness to you. Um, second, you need to get my books and read them. And third, you need to pass something down on to your kids other than poverty and debt. Sprinkle, sprinkle. And yes, if I if I feel like I'm better than most people then you don't know. I don't know most people. Okay. Cause there's people out there way better than me. I'm just trying to help people that want to get out of their, you know, rut or poverty cycle or whatnot or to their next level or level up to their best life. I can't help it. If you mad at me, <laughs> go be mad somewhere else. Make sure you read my book. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> just stay dusty. And it's not my problem. I mean, people, We'll defend that all day long, but, you know, because that's where they're in. And I talked about this earlier. People will defend the lifestyle that they're in all day long because they don't because they feel ashamed of it. And they have to advertise it as something great until they learn that lesson and they are able to move on. And then they don't have nothing to do with it. OK. Like, yeah, I used to be a pick Misha in the comments talking trash. And now I learned my lesson. So, you know, I, that's why I don't care. I know what you're going through. All right. That's why I don't get mad. I just I just try to help you. <laughs> get your money up. Get your man to pay your bills. Change that name. Do something. How can you be a woman and hate she or not with all her children? She must, must be a man or want to be a woman. I don't know. You know, you know how they say only a hit dog hollow? That's all I can figure out. You know, it's a Southern saying, only a hit dog hollow. You said do a call-in show? I don't want no dust on my show, baby. If I call in, I'm going to have strategic callers that's calling in from a place of abundance prosperity and well I ain't letting no dusties on this channel no more okay y'all had y'all day 
Okay. I don't want to have to take an allergy pill before I get on the phone with you. So I might start sneezing or something. Uh -huh. You said your YouTube channel is hollering? Well, at least I have one. Okay. At least I'm not. Honestly, if you have a problem with me, you got a problem with yourself. Because all I'm trying to do is help other people get to the next level. That's it. If you got a problem with me, you got a problem with yourself. You need to go look in the mirror. You said, is James a Nigerian scammer? Actually, no, he's not from Nigeria. <laughs> but that is a good rumor, though. Keep it going. <laughs> Getting at the trolls. Is Girl, how is y'all just tell me all the rumors that, that's going on around me so I can laugh. Y'all be trying to go get y'all news. Like, I, I don't even Google myself every day. This is how funny it is. People be Googling me that never met me. I don't even Google myself. <laughs> I'm glad I'm the highlight of your day. I'm glad I'm the reason you wake up in the morning. I am glad that I am a priority on your mind. I am glad that I am part of the focus that intrigues your mind on a daily basis. I am glad that I'm important enough in your life to think about me more than you probably think about you. And I am honored, I must say. But if you really want the full effects, you need to get my books. <laughs> and my elixirs as well. You need to get all of those things if you really want the full effect and the full story, okay? You said there's rumors that James is a unicorn. Oh my God, for real? I heard he was a werewolf. <laughs> All right. You never know, though. You never know. Could be true. Don't go out in the full moon, y'all. That's all I can tell you. Okay. All right. You said, why is she coming for her, yo, man? Because she ain't got a man. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Why would, why would, why would she be worried about me and some, and my husband in uh, of what, nineteen years, if she had a man? <laughs> I don't know. You say you don't want on your no dust on my show. That's okay. He ain't going nowhere. Don't worry. He here to stay. All right. Come here, James. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate you. Give me some tea. Yeah, here you can eat tea. Thank you. Appreciate you. Oh, is this sugar free? Ooh, zero calories. Yeah. As I was saying, y'all don't be no pick me shot there because you ain't going to get nobody to do nothing for you unless you, you got, keep an attitude. As though you are the prior, okay? <laughs> you say you don't know what a pygmisha is? It's someone who does not challenge a man whatsoever and does whatever they say and text them all their locations and continuously uh, try to do everything to keep them instead of challenging them to the next level, having standards and boundaries. And not just doing everything to keep some man, but allowing the man to do everything to keep them. Okay. Uh, Pigmesia is not what you want to strive to be. It's a desperate woman who will do anything to keep or get a man, including doing whatever they say, not arguing, being his being his peace. <laughs> Don't be his peace, baby. <laughs> mm 
Don't take that advice. And whatever you do, do not be nobody's piece. <laughs> I mean, uh, side piece, main piece, but not P E A C. Because as soon as someone you're someone's piece, they're going out to find someone's excitement. They're going out to find something more challenging. They're going out to find something that they can chase and create, uh, you know, have fun with, and something that's going to give them some, you know, some spice in their life. You don't want to be somebody's boring piece, okay? Okay, you said men love the drama. They do. How can you have peace when you live below poverty? You can't. <laughs> Men don't want pick me. They don't. No prenup. Don't, don't do it. And if you do it, do it on medication while drinking prior without them knowing. And keep your medications, prescriptions, and dates and doctor visit dates. Okay? Null and boys. Sparks, sparks. Um, is it better to be single than being a pick -nation? Yes. Because being single doesn't mean being alone. It don't mean you don't have this dude paying your bills, this dude taking you out, and this dude taking you on vacation. It just means you are not married or in a committed relationship, but it doesn't mean you don't have people trying to get you there. Okay? What are some small ways one can be a pick and not even realize? By doing too much. <laughs> By doing too much for that person, by giving them too much information, by doing too much, by allowing them not to prioritize you, but prioritizing them before you, those are subtle ways. Um, by volunteering to do stuff for this, uh, this person that they didn't ask you, and even if they do ask you, having... Um, no obligation to agree or say yes, but to decline and still feel like you are the prize and that you, um, you know, you're keeping your high standards and stuff like that. Like if someone says, hey, babe, can you take my clothes to the cleaners today? You can say no. Um, no, I'm not going to be anywhere near the cleaners. Um, so no. And not feeling obligated and not caring and knowing that you're going to remain the prize if you don't become his errand girl. You understand? And they won't ask you no more if your question, if your answer is always no. Mm-hmm. Don't let them, do not let them make you an option. Exactly. Don't care. Be who you are unapologetically. Stay who you are. Don't change your standards. If they can't match them or benefit your life, they don't need to be in it. Period. If, if, if you're worried because the dussies are telling you, oh, you're going to wind up alone and be single and da 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 Well, maybe just because they mama is don't mean you will be. Okay. It means that if you do decide to date someone or marry someone, that your standards will be met. And if you do decide that you're not going to settle for less, your lifestyle will not change. Okay. But let's say you settle for less and that person doesn't benefit your life, then your lifestyle could literally go down, literally change for the worst, literally set a bad example up if you have children or have prior children, literally it's going to go in the opposite direction than when you want it to go. So I don't, I would rather be alone than with somebody trying to drag me back to pick Misha hood, dusty hood, poverty, and all of that. Get out the way if you ain't trying to benefit, literally. Otherwise, you know, you can't afford marriage. You can't afford to have a woman. It's not that we gonna end up alone. We will anyway, because women outlive dudes, you know, anyway, y'all usually die before y'all spouses. Y'all men usually die before the wife. So we're going to be alone old anyway. 
but at least we'll have your insurance money. At least we'll have uh, some property. At least we'll have some business to hand down to our children instead of some debt and some uh, some dusty basketball shorts having to go out and buy your first suit for your funeral. No. Yes, I go on rant sometimes. If you, if <laughs> your first suit for your funeral. <laughs> His first suit was his last suit. All right? No. All right. What size does he wear? I don't know. All his pants are three sizes too big. <laughs> this one say 38 and he's skinny. I don't know. Get him a 32. So... You can't sag in the casket, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Um. <laughs> just remember that. Like when y'all start to look at them dusties, just think about what I just said. All right. Y'all know I used to work in a funeral home and we had these real issues. What size does he wear? We got to go buy him a suit. I don't know his pants size, say 30, 38, but he's skinny. Get him a 32. Can't sag in a casket. All right. Literally, I've had this conversation. Y'all think I'd be playing, but I, I draw from real life. Okay. How do you stop being seen as a sexual object? Stop looking like one. Don't like look like if you you can still look sexy, but not like a sexual object. Look like you respect yourself. Don't don't fall into the trends that are going to be stereotypes in the future, and people aren't going to be able to have certain videos or movies with these stereotypes in them because it's going to be deemed as either racist or stereotypical. So they might have to take some of it out. Don't represent that. Okay. I know a lot of the um, stereotypes are being pushed in a certain direction on, let's say Instagram or whatnot. Don't, don't go fully into them because when you look back on your life or if your feet, if your that look is featured in a movie, in 20 years from now, it could be deemed as racist or, you know, um, stereotype, unfavorable stereotypes. So you got to think about that when you go and doing too much and having all of this out, this out, you know, it, it's going to be seen as stereotypical and it's not going to be favored. So I would say um, try to stay looking respectable. All right. Can you meet a rich man working in a funeral home? Yep. I met a lot. Um, you sure can. They usually are going to be the owners, or if you are, if you have, if the funeral home is in a nice area, it's going to be someone that is attending a funeral, or it's usually going to be someone who's like making arrangements for their deceased loved one, and you see how much they're going to spend on a funeral. And, you know, about, you know, they got some, you know, but yes, you can. Um, to help them grieve, here's my number. You can call me anytime if you need to talk to someone. Have I seen family members fight? Yeah, not and not even over inheritance, but just over some stupid stuff. <laughs> like they didn't have no inheritance to fight over. They were fighting over dumb stuff, okay? <laughs> yeah, I've seen a lot of stuff, but I've seen Pygmisha, I've seen women who didn't get the ring or the marriage papers lose everything when they 
man died. <laughs> it's not funny. That's why I say get them papers. Don't be having them hotel weddings where y'all don't get no papers. Okay. Get them papers. Okay. You gonna be out, you gonna be locked outside your own house. <laughs> your husband gonna be in a whole nother state, cremated or buried or whatever he didn't want. <laughs> Next the kid ain't gonna be able to decide, not you, baby. Get them papers. You ain't going to be able to get none of that money out the account. It's just going to be done. You can't even sign the death certificate. His mama, his sister, brother, cousin going to have to sign it. They, you know, somebody. So don't, when they, when they start talking about it's just a piece of paper. Yes, yeah, a piece of paper that's going to keep my house, my the money in your account, and uh, give me going to be able to, you know, claim that insurance, go have that property. Yeah, it's just a piece of paper. You keep believing that until he's gone. <laughs> Don't be having them whole tip weddings, y'all. Get them papers. All right. Don't do it. Don't have no dusty wedding without no papers. Okay. Um, Men Mm -hmm. when your grandfather dies he left my mom land but my uncle took the papers and won't give them back and your mom said she don't care about the land she got, mm -hmm. that's because she ain't got to pay the taxes on sprinkle sprinkle let him pay the taxes on them Okay, this is free. Um, yeah, a lot of these guys who can't afford marriage will literally try to talk you into a marriage with no papers. That's how you know they can't afford it. So make sure, like, this could be the man of your dream. Like, as soon as he started talking about that hotel wedding, Tell him to quit while he ahead. You ain't the one for him. You ain't finna have no hotel with. And, and use the words exactly if you want to really offend someone. It's like, I'm not having no dusty wedding. I ain't having no hotel with. Unless we can go to the courthouse and get these papers. I don't, I'm don't. i not getting ready to commit to you. I am not going to be taken off the market. <laughs> okay, y'all have fun with them dusty weddings. It's not, it ain't me. You watched a family acquaintance have to get a job because she found out her husband is dusty. <laughs> we got, we got, well, okay, we're not married, but he named me his beneficiary on a policy. Do I still need the papers? Well, you're not going to be able to make any funeral arrangements if his next of kin wants to jump in. You know, like if his sister, mother, cousin, brother, you won't have the authority to make funeral arrangements unless he does a pre- Pre-need, which means he pre-plans his own funeral and pays for it. All you got to do is bring in a paper. Um, there are ways around it, but you have to take advance, you know, precautions. And most most women who are pick mishas and go to that hotel win, they don't feel comfortable making advanced precautions. So if you are going to partake in a dusty hotel wedding, make sure all your precautions are taken ahead of time. Names is on stuff, names is on deeds, all of that stuff. You might as well be married if all the names are on all the paperwork. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're going to have to do more paperwork to get your name on stuff than just going and getting the marriage license. So I don't know, whatever he feel comfortable with. Just make sure your name is on everything. You might as well just go get the main paper and forget all the little petty paperwork. Because, like, look, you go you go to the bank, you go to the funeral home, you bring your marriage license, your ID, that's all you need. Insurance, that's all you need. You don't need no deed. You don't need uh, 
affidavit. You don't need none of that stuff. All you need is that marriage license and your ID. That's it. They have you fighting over the goldfish or the dog if you don't have a paper. Mm-hmm. Okay. Percy, sprinkle, sprinkle. Sure, I bought a big hammer truck. When can I take you out for a spin and you don't have to? <laughs> oh, Hummer. Okay, okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. They still sell those? You know, they sold those anymore. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Uh, Percy, you have fun with your Hummer. <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle. Your sugar daddy is very jealous and you have an OnlyFans. He is married, but still jealous. Well, good for him. You keep him walking where he can't have because... He married, all right? Thank, thank you, Sprinkle Sprinkle. Appreciate that, Percy, though. Have fun in your Hummer. <laughs> you moved to a new city as a 24-year-old, and you want to know how can I start to level up mentally. You've been binge-watching my videos, and I don't even know where to start. Okay, start with having standards and high values, and when you deal with anybody, make sure they're treating you as a priority and with the utmost respect and also as if you are a prize. You know what I'm saying? Make them work for you. Get your confidence level up. Um, and also, you know, you need to get my book, Leveling Up to Your Best Life. How you treat yourself will be how other people treat you, especially men. So they they look how they they look at how you treat yourself and then they learn how to treat you. So make sure you're treating yourself the best so that you can only expect the best. You know. Mental level up is number one. It's all in here. Who you think you are, who you think you are, who you know you are, who you will be, who you always was, have been, and always will be. The prize. Number one priority, the uh, main character of your own movie, of your own life. That's who you are. Until you get that up here, people are going to treat you different. My daddy was not a Walmart worker. He was not a great value person. I don't even think Walmart was around when my daddy uh, was born. So I don't know. Kim, hey, Ru, how many loads of laundry do you do a day? <laughs> okay. How many times have you been broken up with? How many tax time dates have you had? How many dustes have asked to flip your tax check? Later? Let me ask you. How many times have a Dusty asked you to buy them some Jordans? Let me ask you. Okay. How can I lead him to give me? By expecting it and saying, oh, we need to go to the store because I need some new this, this, or that. And get to the counter and have him pay. You know, just ex expect that he's going to pay already. Don't even doubt it. Act like he's there to pay for your stuff, you in his presence. Act like you're the prize. When if if he pulls, like you know, I'm not gonna pay. Be like, oh my god, I'm so embarrassed. Um, I just like, and then like, literally tell the salesperson, I am so sorry. I didn't mean to waste your time. Uh, I didn't know that he didn't have any money. And leave. Okay, sparkle, sparkle. This girl always say, I love your truck. They are flirting with me. Is that when I spit game? LOL. Yeah. If, they, if they're complimenting your truck, then use that, baby. Perfect. 
person. <laughs> I like your truck. Thank you. You want to wash it? That's how you can tell who's a pygmisha. If they say yes, pygmisha. <laughs> oh, that might be too far. Say so you want to help me wash it. If they help you wash it, they also pick me sure. Okay. <laughs> All right. If they say they want to drive it, that's the one for you, baby. Okay, that's how you that's how you weed out pick me. They, if they want to wash it with you, they want to wash it alone. If they want to ride next to you, they may be okay. But if they say I want to drive it, that's the one. <laughs> All right, girl, it does. Uh-oh, Star Gamers, Sprinkle Sprinkle, you change your life. You listen to my videos and you have a million dollar house and nice cars and choosing the correct target was your favorite video. All right. Yes, get your money, girl. Sprinkle Sprinkle. I'm so glad my videos helped you get to that next level. And I hope that it, others will watch that video. It's called Choosing the Correct Target. <laughs> Bish, you sound like you got black lip liner on with with nude lipstick. This <laughs> is sprinkle sprinkle. <laughs> you said Kim Hayru, you sound like you got you got that nude lipstick on with that black liner, girl. Sprinkle sprinkle and, and popping gum when you chew. <laughs> oh my goodness. Beach, beach. <laughs> okay. I'd be mad too if I was you, for real. All right. Switch to brown and maybe get a more of a tan lip color. Um, Still Unbothered by Shira 7 is a really good color. Or Sugar Daddy. Um, let's see. Yes. You should get sugar daddy lipstick. If you can't get a real sugar daddy, maybe this will help you. It is a nude. Please do not pair this with black lip liner. It is ratchet. You can use brown, maybe a little mauve or maroon color or a slightly darker color than this. But do not put no black lip liner over my stuff, okay? And tell people, don't. if you put black lip liner over my stuff, don't tell them whose it is. Don't tell them the brand. They ask you what lipstick you got on. Don't, don't tell them, okay? Don't put no black lip. Don't put no eyeliner. Okay. Uh, now I, I can understand if you're gonna do it with red and you have really like pronounced lips, but don't do it with the nude. Okay. Sparkle, sparkle. The name of this lipstick is called Sugar Daddy. And you can get that at levelupcosmetics.us. And if you use the coupon code five and like all caps, you say five dollars. Yes, let me link y'all that real quick. All right, and just type in lipstick or sugar daddy or whatever in the search bar when you get to the Level Up website. And it will come up for you or just type in lipsticks and all my lipstick colors will come up for you. And here's my coupon code, saving $5, okay? All right, y'all go get it. All right. <laughs> Y'all know y'all are only adding comedic uh, help to my videos, right? Like the trolls. Y'all only help me stay in the category of comedy. So I'm good. You said, I, I got nails that look like I've been digging the ground for real gold. I know. I broke my nail today, y'all. I'm glad you noticed, you know, you must be really looking. It's glad, I'm glad somebody noticed me. Is it James didn't notice? 
but I know you looking. That's okay. It feels good to be seen and noticed. <laughs> Said observant Pygmisha. Yes, like. <laughs> it's nice to be noticed. Yes, I hope. If you was a man, you. <laughs> That if you were a man, you know, you'd be a sensitive one because you'd be noticing everything. All right. Put your nails back up to the camera up close. You're going to see more. I don't have to do that, baby. I'm grown. I'm married. Got a nice car. Don't have to work. My nails can look as ratchet as they want because I can go get them done tomorrow while you still clocking in. Okay, spark, sparkle. I could have the little lady ask me, is it my day off? And I say no. Okay, you gonna say yes. We different. <laughs> don't come, don't come for me. Okay. When, when the lady that do nails asks, is this my day off? I say no, you say yes. We different. Okay. <laughs> my nails can stay ratchet you know why because I have all these options to paint them look y'all want to get y'all want to get y'all want to y'all y'all want to throw salt which color should I which color should I do baby y'all pick my nail color which one which one I'm gonna do Ooh. Which one should I do today? I need to cut them and start over or I could put a tip on this one. Which one? Hmm, maybe I should do black. Maybe this nude. Y'all know I could be petty. Shira, I'd like to thank you for the wise advices that you give and give great advice last year about how to have your provider buy your dream car. And it worked, I chose the right target and you have a million dollar house. Oh, you told me that girl, thank you, Sparkle Sprinkle. You, and you got your dream car. Girl, get your money. Uh oh, Cameron, Sprinkle Sprinkle. You always make my day, I love you so much. Thank you for keeping us in check and for empowering us women. Thank you, girl, thank you, Carmen. Sprinkle Sprinkle, appreciate that. Let's see what nail color I should do with my ratchet nails. I look like I've been digging in the dirt for real gold. Okay. See what you can do. All right. Don't worry, they'll be done when I do my book release so I can model on the pages and stuff for y'all. But I'm not going to let a broken nail stop me from getting on here and doing my video for y'all, okay? I'm not Pikisha, I don't worry about stuff. I'm good enough. <laughs> All right. What do you think about manicured but natural nails? I think natural nails are fine. I have this really pretty nude color right here um, that I probably have worn as a natural manicure when my nails are very short. It's called Organdi. And I think they're pretty. I just, it just depends on the mood you're in. Like whatever mood I'm in, that's what nail polish I'm gonna do. Like I'm trying to do like this fall color. And um, I actually had to do um, a little advertisement for a company that sent me something to um, promote. So I couldn't have like chipped nails. So I just threw a coat over it, over it real quick. Okay. Uh oh, J9 Boosie. Oh, wait, I'm putting two names together. J9 and J Boosie is two different people, but they're both members. If y'all want to be a member, I shout y'all out whenever I see y'all in the video. Just go to the uh, channel page and join the members. Okay. You said the dusty men in the comments are part of the entertainment. I know, right? I mean, who else can we make jokes on? Okay. All right. 
You like that shaker? Mm-hmm. You said you bet she missing an inch long neon green nail with designs on it? No. She can't afford that one. <laughs> the designs is extra. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> All right. Y'all, y'all know this is a comedy channel, right? But I will still also give you advice and life lessons and level up. But my channel is literally listed under comedy. And the funny part about it is it wasn't originally supposed to be a comedy channel until the trolls started coming and then it just became a comedy channel. Because a lot of the trolls invoke comedy within me, you know, invoke jokes. So I changed my channel to comedy because it literally turns into, com you know, a comedy when these dusties, you know, you know, forget where they at. <laughs> you know, so, you know, I just take it to that level. All right. But those who know my channel know that they're going to get good advice here. And if it turns into comedy, it turns into comedy. Okay. Can I still get a provider man with two babies and the dad doesn't help? Sure you can. Women do it every day. You said heal your daughters. Heal the world. Make it a better place. <laughs> heal everyone that needs a healing. Go up to the, um, what you call it, the pool pit. And get them healing hands on you by pastor and, and they, he will heal you with that building fund. Do what you got to do, ladies. Okay. <laughs> by all means, heal, yeah, heal my bank account. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh oh, Moon Princess Sprinkle Sprinkle. This is your favorite channel? Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm glad this is your favorite channel, Sprinkle Sprinkle. I really appreciate that. Thank you, everyone who has made a donation. J9 says, thank you. Thank you for putting that in there. I, I, I always thank y'all for making donations. Mm -hmm. All right. Shira, you literally make our days. I love a good belly laugh. Girl, them, them trolls be disappearing quick. They know I do not care. <laughs> Honestly, I believe in making everything negative into something positive. That's why I be living my best life unbothered. Because, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people can't stand being ridiculed, talked about, targeted, and sad, untrue gossip. But for me, it's publicity. For me, it's a joke. For me, I'm going to turn it into money. For me, I'm going to write books. For me, I'm still going to get my money no matter what people try to do. Why they still broke. I'm still going to do what I do. Um, I turn whatever, basically, you know, you just take lemons and make lemonade and sell it. <laughs> okay. That's what I do. I'm not just making a lemonade. I'm selling it too, baby. Like, not literally, because I've never had a lemonade stand, but figuratively, I'm going to take what you throw at me. I'm going to turn it around, make it positive, and then I'm going to teach y'all how to make money on to do the same thing. I'm going to take everything that was thrown at me and make it more valuable as to where I benefit and I'm going to also make it a lesson for other people to learn how to also benefit in the same manner, because that's what I do. I don't take it and go cry in a corner, sad somewhere, and say, woe is me. I take it and I flip it and I turn it back and I get paid. OK, that's that's a woman. OK, <laughs> that's the type of woman men like. They don't like pick me show. They don't like they don't like all of that. They'll take it temporarily until they find the one that can do what I do. Okay, sprinkle, sprinkle. 
And if you become like this, then you'll see your life level up to the best it can be, no matter how rich you are, how middle class you are. You know, if you're coming out of poverty and making more moves to prioritize yourself and, you know, get out of the poverty cycle, your level up is always going to be moving in a direction that's going to benefit your lives. Okay? So don't take what people tell you. Don't worry about people spreading rumors about you. Don't worry about haters. Don't worry about any of those. Those people are there for you to flip and make money off of. Okay? Because that's what I do. Like, oh, opportunity. You know, how can I make this make money? This is how all the millionaires and billionaires got paid. They saw issues, they saw problems, and they saw solutions that made money. Yeah, it's called transmutation and, and alchemy. But they transmuted anything that was supposed to be negative into something profitable. And if you are unable to do that as a woman, then learn. Okay, and nothing will be able to stop you. Don't let these dusties come out swinging a dust. Don't let these pygmies tell you to want less and have less because you act like you look down on everybody. Well, then level up so we don't have to look down, okay? The information is free. I'm not holding workshops, charging $1,000 for you to learn how to level up. Get this free information on this channel that you're clicking on. All you got to do is watch a couple commercials. I mean, that's enough. To, you know, to get some free information, get my book. If you want to pay for all my hard work, if you want to have it on your little coffee table, take it with you while you're waiting in line to get the kids from school or waiting in line somewhere or, you know, cuddled up on your couch, enjoying your cup of tea or wine. Do what you got to do. But at the same time, don't let haters stop you from doing nothing. Don't let jealous, petty pig Misha stop you from being the best version of yourself. Because then who's she going to be jealous of? <laughs> okay. I would rather you be jealous of me than me be jealous of you. That's all. That's the attitude you must have. Because if it's if the if everything was switched around, then I would be pretty sad and pathetic. Now, would not. So, yes, I'm not looking down on anybody. If you if you need to level up, then say that. <laughs> OK. Say that. Don't don't be mad because I'm trying to teach people how to get to the next level. Get to the next level so you so you could do the same. Don't be mad. <laughs> you said love works, failure or win. Love plays bills. Okay, you love me, pay my bills. Sparkle, sparkle. Um, if any man come by, come around telling you they love you, tell tell them then you love my bills too. <laughs> that's true love, baby. That's true love. I love you and them bills. Give them to me. You got some debt too? I can have. I can show you. I prove how much I love you. Give me the debt. Got some old credit card debt? Give me that too. Got some student loan? Give me that too. So I can pay. Okay, that's that's real love. <laughs> to free someone of that is real love. Don't talk about, what about love? I love you, though. And then got all these bill collectors calling, uh, late notices showing up. You don't love me because you don't love my bills or my debt. Okay? <laughs> you love these bills, then. I can't focus on love when I have to focus on this. That's what women need to realize. If, if you got a pink, no, if you got a pink bill notice, and, and bill collectors calling you and you laid up with a dusty, this is not love. <laughs> okay. If you dating a man who got money and rich and you still in debt, that's not love either. All right. There you go. Do you, have by any chance, read the message on your YouTube community page? I will read them right after this. But I do read them sometimes. 
um, when I go through. Uh, I've been really busy this week, but I definitely will. Do you? Okay, yeah, I'll read them. I usually read them. You had a troll steal your clothing design and post lies about you all over the internet and sabotage your business. It's been going on for years. She used fake accounts to spy and destroy your businesses. Then you want me to tell you how to solve that? Do the same thing. Lie. Okay. Lie, lie, lie. Do the same thing, but don't don't make it up. Lie. She's just mad because I wouldn't hire her. Go ahead and make up some good old lies. She's just mad because I wouldn't hire her. And so she made it her life mission to try to destroy the company that she wanted so bad to work for. Then say, I tried to send her an, an application, but she didn't pass the background check. Be done. Be done. Get creative and be done. Put out an official statement. And, and, and have it on record. Do a whole video about it if you got to. Send her a cease and desist if you got to. But I would definitely... And if you respond so nicely and so classy and, you know, however you need to do, then I think more people would believe you than her. And problem is solved. <laughs> okay. You said, why not sue for slander? Cause she ain't got no money if she over there doing all of that. You gonna you gonna waste your money trying to sue? Sprinkle, sprinkle. You can't sue for slander if the person is broke. You gonna be wasting your time, a hood time, and your money. Put her back in her place where she belongs until she can go find some other business, darling. All right. <laughs> yeah, y'all hit the like. Hit the like button. He says, you sent cease and desist? All right. Then change the name of your company. Change the name of your company, baby. And make it make it something like against, like, whatever her, like, I don't know her name is or their name is. Make it something silly, like. To do with her, I like guess, in a in a secretive way, so where she know she you trolling on. Her. God is wild, Fred. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Your teen daughter introduced you to me. Love you. Oh, sprinkle, sprinkle. Where your teen daughter? Oh, she getting the info before she even get out there with these dust. It's good for her. I'm glad. I'm glad she shared the channel. Yes. Flip it and make money off of it like I did. Like I have a lip gloss called Chapstick Alley. It's a clear lip gloss. Because <laughs> that's all the makeup they wear. Okay. Over there. So, you know, you got sometimes you gotta laugh at it and, and make stuff work in your benefit. Okay. Maybe you could rename your company Cease and Desist. <laughs> rename your company Haters Gonna Hate. I don't know. Name it something else. Name it like You Can't Sit With Us. I don't know. Do something silly. That's what I would do. Or create a line. Maybe do, do your own fashion line. Talking about, you know, name the whole line. Like, you can't sit with a cease and desist. You know, throw 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 stuff at them without, and make money at the same time. Just be gone. <laughs> exactly. All 
All right. I can't be mad. I just booked their fifth vacation this year. Okay. Make your haters motivators. Exactly. If your haters aren't motivating you to the next level, then they're not doing their job correctly. <laughs> That's just my take on it. Them haters are not there for themselves. Because if they were for themselves, they would not be here for you. They would be worried about their own business, their own man, getting their own business up. If they sit on here worried about you, they are sent here to make you better. So use that and become better. Okay, because they could be doing anything else. They could be watching Netflix. They could be going shopping. That looks right there. It's from that bottle. They could be doing anything. But they're here for you to get you to the next level. So use it. <laughs> Ask a hater if she got a hater. She ain't got no hater. Because nobody care enough to hate on somebody that's busy hating everybody else. Okay. <laughs> she wish she had a hater, right? All right. Shira, you gave me $500. Oh, Shira, a guy, because I know I didn't. <laughs> Shira, a guy gave you $500 without meeting me, and he told me that I had to see him for him to give me the cash. So I ghosted him. He's contacted me for months. He's being desperate to see me. What do I do? $500. Girl, if he that desperate, double it. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Double it and be in a public area. And bring somebody with you that's going to sit somewhere else to, so they can escort you out when it's time for you to leave. It, okay, but, but double it. He was focused on the love still, but I forgot that many don't know what real love is. Yeah. And real love is different for different people. So th there's not one specific definition for what real love is. Real love to me may be the total opposite of what real love is to pick Bisha. But if I'm going to experience and feel real love according to my definition of it, then that's what I'm going to require. That's what I'm going to see as real love. And then that is what I'm going to expect as real love. I'm not going to expect the same type of love or real love, or the definition of real love that a Dusty or a Pygmisha would accept, because our definitions are different. You know what I'm saying? So you may perceive real love as something when a, a man may perceive it as something else. That's why your standards and how you treat yourself and what, you know, what it is that you represent will kind of give them a definition of what you perceive real love as so that they can somehow try to give it to you. Okay. Otherwise, if you just leave it all up in the air, then they're just going to take their definition and assume that it's just good enough for you. So real love depends on your definition of it and no one else's. So just remember that. Um, people are different. They are individual. And so they are um, you know, having different definitions of what love is, what real love is, what this is, what this is. To so some people, real love could just be, oh, just be there when I need you. Some people love these bills too, okay? Some people do this, oh, just, just make sure that um, you come home every night or just make sure that you're always going to answer my text and, and not, never cheat on me and stuff like that. Real love could be different for different people. So, a lot of times people don't know what real love is because they don't ask the other person who they're involved with what it means to them. And people should respect what real love means to an individual and not try to change it. If you try to change it, then it's not going to be the feeling that they're going to receive because in their mind, that's what it is. And that's what it's going to stay. So you can't change the definition of real love. Um, according to what someone believes. It has to be, you have to know what their definition is and try to get as close to it as you can. When a guy gave you money without meeting, okay. He desperate, I said double it. Girl, if he that desperate, tell him a thousand. You got stuff to do. Mm-hmm. 
You say you don't choose your partner, your partner chooses you. Um, if you're available to be chosen. That's true. You said I'm clowning people who clock in. I used to clock in, but I don't clock in no more. And all them people that's clocking in watching videos on how not to clock in. Okay. If you like clocking in, then say you like clocking in. That's not my problem. I'm trying to help people not have to clock in. I told you make a channel on how to clock in and then say your say your piece, baby. Y'all know those infomercials with the, the super excited person or guy on there? Do you want to make thousands of dollars a day? Do you are you tired of clocking in? Do you want to get out of the rat race? Should I do that? Well, sign up for this course and spend all this money so you can start making millions this year. Girl, I, look, get you a sugar daddy. Stop clocking in. Don't settle for less. Stop dating dusty. It's the same thing. Okay. The fastest way for a person in the United States to get rich is to marry or to date up. Okay. If you can't do it, just say you can't do it. Start a business if you can't do it. Write a book if you can't do it. You know, do all of the above. Marry up, write a book, start a business, do all of the above if you can't do it. Start a channel on how to clock in and stay clocking in. It's up to you, baby. I'm trying to help people get to the next level. If you're trying to keep them down, say you're trying to keep them down. If you clocking in, you need to be figuring out how, how to not be clocking in. You need to be taking notes. Okay? Don't nobody want to clock in for the rest of their life? Okay, I'm just being honest. Y'all can, you can hate if you want to, but we know deep down inside you, you hate clocking in, lady. <laughs> okay, that's the whole reason this channel is here, because I hate it. I hated going to work and clocking in. I was done and tired. I'm like, I'm not working no more. You're going to get me somebody that's going to take care of me. Okay? Yes, I look down at anyone who doesn't want to be where they at because they shouldn't stay there. You're doing yourself a disservice. Get up out of there if you don't want to be there. If you like clocking in, then more power to you. Okay? Don't sit over here and spread poverty mind over here with your whole tip mess. Y'all go sell some incense on the corn. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Star gamer, sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> I said what I said. I know I, I am politically incorrect. I don't care what you think. I am going to continuously spread my knowledge and help other women to not be a pigmisha or a dusty. I help Dusties to level up too to get to their next level. If you are if you are a man and you are under 25, then I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about the men that them their mama's not proud of. <laughs> the men that's still in the back room of their mama's house or in their basement, okay? And asking for $20 when they grow. Okay. This is who I'm talking to. Dusties. Pick Misha's who will do anything to keep a man. <laughs> okay. No. How do you deal with men in a classy way who follows new girls on social media and they are married and engaged? Do the same thing. Follow other dudes. <laughs> Follow his lead, baby. That's what you do. How can people be in their 30s and 40s comfortable living with their moms? Because they like clocking in, baby, or not clocking in. They literally said they ain't clocking in no more, but instead of getting a man or starting a business, they just live with their mama. The key is to not clock in and have money at the same time. Okay, That's, that's the hack of life. Most people are trying to get to that stage, and I, and I help people. I took a shortcut. I ain't going to lie. That's why I'm sharing how to get how to get there quick. Not a question, but literally you help me level up your mind, spirituality, and bank forever. Grateful. Uh-oh. 
Janavi, sprinkle, sprinkle. I am, I am so glad. I have no shame in how I leveled up. I have no shame in anything that I have done. I feel like if I can share it with other women, I'd, I'd be more ashamed of living with a Dusty than uh, having a sugar daddy. Okay, I would be more ashamed to be sitting at a bus stop than to walk into a restaurant with an old dude <laughs> and everybody know what the relationship is. I, I would rather that. Okay, I have no problems with that. You know why? Because I don't have to clock in no more, baby. And my children will have the option of never having to clock in as well. Okay, sparkle, sparkle. I have no shame in my game. And if you if you ashamed of yourself, just say you ashamed of yourself. That whoever that hater is, and get yourself to the next level. Women are doing what they need to do to have the lifestyle that they want to level up to their best life. Okay, get that book, y'all. Get your money. Get your book. Don't date without a purpose. Don't listen to Pick Misha. Okay. And she ain't gonna help you. You will be you will feel like you didn't waste years of your life if you continuously listen to a Pick Misha. Okay. Make sure you're getting your money, prioritizing yourself and making your life better, as well as for your next generation or you know, your children and whatnot. Get that book. As soon as your grandmother used to tell your grandfather she had a headache for a few days. We all knew some more diamond jewelry was on the way. <laughs> okay. Grandma, get that, get that jewelry, Grandma. Do I think women should live in their parents until they get married? I think women should live with their parents until they are able to live a comfortable life. Whether it be getting married or being able to support themselves via getting paid however way but until they can live a comfortable life I, no need to leave if you're going to struggle women always have the option to move in with some dude who's going to pay all their bills most of the time if they leveled up so i would definitely make sure that if you leave it's going to be beneficial sure it gets lonely when you start following your advice all the sugar babies are and desperate ones who can't get any providers are no longer my friends. Gets lonely and listen to you as my best friend. You can't trust none of these rest but you. <laughs> uh oh, star gamer, sprinkle, sprinkle. Well, you're not gonna keep friends if you're their competition. Okay. Um, that's why I always tell y'all to go alone when you freestyle. And sorry, good pair. And don't worry about it. Once you get your bag, once you get your van, once you secure your bag, your van, your lifestyle, then you can start reintroducing like-minded people or do something, you know, fun with people that have other interests besides lifestyle. You know, usually if you if you make friends with people that already have the lifestyle that you have, they're not going to be jealous. So try to find people that already have what you have or more, and they can't really be jealous. Mm -hmm. Don't aim low, aim high, even when it comes to friendship. Okay. So you're still a virgin. No man will have your mind or body. Good for you, baby. Keep your standards. You know, that works in many cultures. And as long as you are, you know, stand by your standards and you're going to get the most for your money, then stand by your standards. I have no problem with that. Yes. He said, she are you to be a pick Misha, but still been working on yourself, do, but you still struggling. Any other tips to level you up super fast? Okay, the, the fastest way to quickly level up is to act like you already got it. Walk in any place as if you can buy a bar, as if you could buy anything on the rack. Walk in any place as if you are already where you want to be. Have that attitude. Walk into any place as if you can have any man. And that you are the prize and that you are to be catered to. Walk around with that attitude. Walk around with that attitude, no matter what 
basically walk around with the attitude that you are better than everybody else. Okay, because you say you're trying to level up. Where are you trying to level up to? To be better, right? If people assume that you're better than them, they're going to treat you better. If you walk into somewhere like a store, for example, you walk into a store like this versus like this. How much is this? Doesn't matter. I want it. They're going to think way more of you. If you walk into a bar like this, men are going to be like, ooh, she ain't desperate. She ain't looking at the door every time it opens. She's looking good, too. You go see what she, she want to drink. You know, but if you go in there looking like, people are going to treat you that way. So you got to go in there looking like you already got it. Looking like you can have it anytime you want it. That's it. And eventually you will. Go and go act like you better than everybody everywhere you go. Be pick Misha's worst nightmare. Okay. <laughs> Give people something to be jealous of. Okay. It don't even matter if you're the most beautiful woman. To yourself, you are the most beautiful woman. You deserve the most in life. You don't settle for less, no matter how you look. Make sure you're well put together. Your outfit's nice, da da da, da you know? But, and act like that. Because, you know, I've seen women go into these shops and they, they may not look the best, but they act like they can afford the best. They act like they can do the most. They act like they are there to be served, okay? That's how you got to go everywhere. That's how you got to allow people to treat you as if you are that type of person. So that's the fastest way to level up is to go in there acting like you're already where you want to be. Okay? You say you act like that and people say I have a nasty attitude, but they didn't call you broke, did they? Sprunk, sprunk. They didn't call you pig Misha, did they? <laughs> And you don't have to have a nasty attitude. You can talk nice to people. You can say, hi. <laughs> Just talk in a bougie manner. In an expecting attitude, like, hi. Yes. Would you be able to help me? Da -da 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 -da. Great. I really appreciate that. Rather than looking lost and like you don't know if you're supposed to be there or not and if somebody's going to help you or not, you go straight up to them and tell them they need to help you. I'm going to need your help. Would you direct me into, you know, da -da -da -da, or do you know, da -da 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 -da. go in there with that, with that, I, I deserve the best. I'm the, I'm all that. Even at a bar, like you going out to, to happy hour in the bar, excuse me. What's the best thing on your menu? Do you have any new drinks? What do you suggest? I'm, I'm in the mood for something different. You know, treat yourself the best. Don't, don't hold your confidence back. You know, that's the fastest way to level it. People will see you totally different. Like you could look the same exact way. Or they're gonna be like, who's that? Who's that? They can try to eavesdrop on your conversation, see what you got on. <laughs> Wonder what they do. They're gonna start asking questions about you in their mind. You're like, dang. You know, they're gonna admire your level of confidence and how you command the, the room and all that kind of stuff. And then that's usually what it just takes. All right, y'all, I gotta go. But make sure y'all click like and y'all hit like and y'all hit that little bell if y'all are new subscribers and y'all get my book, How to Level Up to Your Best Life or Leveling Up to Your Best Life, sorry. It won't have this on there. This is just my copy for proofing. But they also have the hardcover. It costs a little bit more, but you know, you can get your man to pay for it. Um... If you have a business, you can write it off. 
as research material. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Look, I'm trying to help y'all. Yeah. Write it off. This is research material. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You said, please do more black backsliding in your level up journey videos. Backsliding? You mean moonwalking? That's all the only backslide I do, baby. I have to moonwalk. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Mm -hmm. All right. Your book comes out tomorrow. Your book comes tomorrow, pretty Yasmin. You ordered it all. Um, thank y'all. If you have an Instagram, tag me if, if you post the book, okay? She was seven one. All right. I'll, I'll check that section. I'll remember, okay? J9, I see you. I'm going to check it right now. I, actually, let me check it on my phone. I got you. See what I do for, you, for my members? That's not what I'm doing. I'm going to check it right now. Promoter the section, okay? Right. Whoosh, did you did you comment under the little planners? Which who who am I commenting back to? Oh god goddess will red sprinkle sprinkle wild red sprinkle sprinkle please please start telling selling candles and coffee moves. Hmm, I'll see what I can do. Sprinkle, sprinkle. We said 18 hours ago. Hold on. That's two months ago. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see anything like, is it on this channel? I see two months ago. Let me look. Oh, there's nothing posted there. Which post is it under? I don't see it. Two days ago. Keep spitting the truth. The packaging on the product is out of this world. Thank you, Sparkle Sparkle. I don't know who. Uh oh, I missed the super chat. Hold on. Do this. Okay. Nishi, you don't make friends easily and don't talk a lot. People often perceive that me thinking too highly of myself. I don't see a problem with that, but I hear it so often. Should I tone it down? No. Let me tell y'all a story. Quick, real quick before I go. People used to say that about me when I was younger. Before all the internet stuff, before everybody had Instagram stuff, when MySpace was still out. And I would go out and there would be some regulars, that should tell you some, some regulars at this bar, they were, they were women. And they would always say that I was stuck up and, you know, all thinking I was all that because I wasn't like them. And that's why I'm not in that bar today, still sitting at the same counter. And they are, okay? Let me tell you why. Because I have higher standards. I, you know, I made sure that I didn't stay there and try to blend in and be like other people and lower myself for them. I made sure I stayed where I was and leveled up and not worried about what other people think. Okay. So that's how you know. That's how you know you're doing right. Who cares what they think? If you're going to tone it down, you're going to be exactly where they at, baby. Don't tone it down. You can be nicer to people if they if they are you know trying to really get to know you, but don't don't lower yourself for them. Make them come to you, baby. Make them say I was wrong about you. Make them say you know what, you're not stuck up. You just have high standards and you don't deal with the BS, baby. And then they'll learn how to do it. Same thing from you, and you will have helped them. Okay, don't ever lower yourself for other people. Now, I don't know what I'm supposed to be looking at on here. Sprinkle, sprinkle. 
how do I define success? When you wake up excited every day, don't have to worry about money and living your best life. You don't have to be rich. You don't have to be a millionaire, but you don't need to be checking your account every time you go pump gas either. OK, um, you don't wake up worried about paying bills, but you wake up excited about life. That to me is a really good definition of success. If you are proud of who you are, uh, your children and da, da 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 that's success for me. Okay, I don't feel like success can be measured, especially in a woman, because we do so much. We're going to be successful regardless because we do so much. But I feel like if you wake up and you're excited to, to start your day and you don't have to worry about anything, you have success. Mm -hmm. How can you get back on your level up journey after falling off for a bit? You never get off your level up journey. Like I say, as, as long as your level up is your mental level up journey is going, you're never off your level up journey. As long as your level up journey is staying mental, first and foremost, you can never get off your level up journey. Physical is a different story. You can physically get off your level up journey. But as long as that mental level up journey is still there, you will always go right back to it. So you're never really off. You could be taking a break. You could be um, taking your time to do whatever it is that you need to do to get yourself back to wherever you need to get to. But at the same time, you're never off of it if, you're, if your mental is there always. So that's why this book will definitely teach you how to not worry about obligations, deadlines and, you know, feeling guilty about spending time doing something else or enjoying life to the fullest because you're never off. Just it's, it's kind of like life. You know, some people get in a rut with their life and they don't do anything for a while. But then when they get that motivation or they get a great idea, they're right back at it. They didn't die. They, they still there. They still moving in the right direction. Doesn't matter how slow. As long as your mental is there, you're good. Okay. Her, her. Okay. He said, you must be successful. Then you've gotten there from listening to Shira. She is the truth. Yeah, sprinkle, sprinkle, girl. And look, I was excited to wake up a lot of days, except the days I was clocking in, unless I was trying, you know, you know, go meet somebody for lunch or something. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I was excited about life after I had the freedom to do what I wanted to do. That's the key. All right. I will see y'all on the next one. Y'all click that like button. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank y'all, everybody who donated. Thank y'all, everybody who bought my book. I'm going to be putting out a vlog for you guys very soon. Doing a little, little beauty routine. Y'all like this little, little beauty routine. Some fragrances. You know, a lot of y'all been asking me what perfume, what makeup. Um, I'm going to do a little vlog for y'all. Kind of like a fall theme, beauty vlog, whatever. Give y'all a little something different. And hopefully y'all will all watch it. I think more people watch these live videos and watch these, you know, talking videos than they do my vlogs. And so, you know, I want y'all to start watching the vlogs more. Just put it on when you're getting ready in the morning or you just want, you know, have a little cup of coffee or tea. They're not very long. And, you know, it'll kind of get you in the mood for fall and give you some ideas on fragrances and perfumes and makeup and stuff like that. You know, girly stuff. Uh-huh. Will you sign a book when we order? I No, because they're from Amazon. But I definitely, okay, now listen. I'm going to order some books and I'm going to sign some and I'm going to do a giveaway. So uh, when I do my official book release launch on this channel, I will definitely title the video official book release launch and I will be giving away a few autograph copies. But um, usually, you know, my handwritten signature is not in there, but I did I did leave y'all a little a little note in the back that I have a little fake signature. <laughs> and I did acknowledge all my YouTube. Um, 
subscribers. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I said thank you to my family who love and support me in everything I do. I thank some of the people that help me with my business. I help thank my editor. And I also thank y'all my other books. But yeah, I consider y'all like my family over here. So, yes. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> next week, baby. The launch date will be next week sometime. I will post it early, like on the community section, so, so we can all plan it. It's probably going to be more in the evening. And um, I will let y'all know what time it is, like at least a day or two before. Because I'm waiting on the hard cover because I had to order my own too. Like when you publish on Amazon, you have to order your own books. So I'm waiting on the hard cover to arrive. And I'm going to sign some of those and give some of those away during the book launch. You can order the book now, definitely. Here is the link. There's hard cover and then there's paperback. You'll see the difference. It is a thick book. It's over 200 and something pages. So it's well worth it. It's full color. So y'all get that. Gift it. Do whatever you got to do. Send it to a pick me shit anonymously. Um, and it's not just for level up girls. It's for anybody. It just teaches you how to appreciate and love the life that you have. It teaches self-love, prioritizing yourself, which is what I think pick Misha needs the most before she can level up and get the game. We need self-love and, and to prioritize ourselves first and foremost and live like we want to live so our standards are raised and not put down and we're able to not be bothered or affected by negative naysayers or dusties that's trying to make you fall for the okie doke. We need that fortification. I'm going to use a big word, which is strength. We need that strengthening in who we are before anyone else can, um, you know, contribute to us. Okay. So that's what the book is going to do. It's going to fortify you to where people will want to level you up for people will want you in their life because just by being in their life, their lifestyle, improves. make sure you get it. You can give this book to anyone. It's not inappropriate. You can give it to your mother. So um, I try to make it very, um, family friendly. I try to make it uh, age friendly. So any age, I try to make it budget friendly. So any budget, okay. Anybody can read this book. Even a guy can read this book <laughs> uh, and feel like they're living their, you know, life and leveling it up to the best. Okay. So I'll see y'all later.